All right, what's up, everybody? It's Friday. It's Open Comms time. Uh, we've got a bunch of people here tonight. Uh, so I'm Drayden. I'm here. Uh, we got Dirk. How are you doing, Dirk? Yo, what's up? Not too much. Rain, how's it going? Good. How are you, Drayden? Good. All right, and then we got LB as always. How's it going, man? Good. How are you doing? Going good. And uh, Matterell's with us. Hey, Drayden. How's it going? And then Drunk Canadian. What's up, man? Yeah, just getting voice for people, just in case they're on the podcast. Uh, all right, and then we got some guests. Oh, shit, I have to uh, swing the thing down. But, uh, yeah, so we got some uh, CSM candidates, people that are going to be running for CSM. So we got Vic Jefferson. How are you doing, man? Yo, not too bad. How about yourself? Uh, pretty good. Aaron Thor is here as well. Hey, good to be here. Yeah. And then Commander Aze. Is it Aze or Aze? Aze. Thanks Aze. for having me. Yeah, man. And then Rodin. Hey, what's up, guys? Pretty good. Setonia is here. Yeah, what up, guys? Uh, you got any pickup lines? Oh, I I've actually posted like ten today. Oh man. So you're Choose spent. that goon, that goon fucking one. Do that one. Your load's blown. That's a pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Drayden. I hope you don't join Goon Swarm, so that way I won't get banned for goon fucking. <laughs> yeah, that was a good. One. I saw that one today. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Alright, so... Alright, so, uh, yeah, so we're gonna kick... Um, one thing I was gonna do when we kick it off before we get into all this CSM discussion stuff, uh, just so people um, know who you guys are and, like, what your general background is and stuff, so we're, I was gonna go through each of you guys and you can kind of say, like, you know, uh, are you, like, high sec, wormholer, industrial, like, you know, what do you do and uh, just some... just general. It doesn't have to be, like, your platform yet, but just kind of, like, just general background on you. So let's start with you, Vic Jefferson. Um, so I started playing about four years ago. I started playing this game with uh, people from a different MMO. Um, they all quit. I wanted to stick with it. I thought it had a lot of potential and that they were kind of being stupid about it. So um, I joined uh, the first alliance I saw, which was Groon, which is an offshoot of Goons. And I flew with them for a while. I kind of learned NPC Nullsec. It was a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoyed the fleets that they did and, you know, just kind of bumming around in NPC No. Uh, I joined Goons Proper for a little bit after that, and that was fun. Got to do some bigger fleets. Um, after that, I kind of just uh, dirked around and joined Rogue Capel and just still doing lots of small gang. So I'd consider myself kind of, uh, if it's NPC No, if it's low sec, or if it's no sec, that's where I want to be. Uh, I do do a lot of other stuff in terms of, like, high sec industry and um, a lot of PvE as well, but... Uh, so I think I'm pretty well versed, except for wormholes. Okay, sounds good. All right, let's uh, go on to Arenthor. Arenthor, I think. Hi, well, I'm uh, well. I live in Nullsec at the minute, uh, part of Goons. Um, basically, I started off the game in high sec and got stuck into the usual. I'm gonna mine for a living and make loads and loads of isk. Um, I quickly burnt out of that. Moved out of Nullsec about two and a half years ago, and honestly, I haven't looked back. Um, I generally just go around doing exploration and carrier wrapping all day because I'm a massive Jew. <laughs> um, apart from that, I do a bit of seeing on this as well. Um, that's pretty much it for me. Alright, um, let's swing it on down to Commander A's. Alright, so I lived in Nullsec for a while, but currently I run a high sec alliance that, uh, well, high sec combo to low, uh, low class wormhole we live in a c2 as well um with eventually the goal of moving back out to null um after living there for a while you know i kind of decided with a couple of friends that we wanted to kind of try and build our own thing and then you know eventually make it back out there uh i'm more well known from being the specter fleet at team captain uh and uh my time with them so yeah really kind of anything goes for me Cool. Uh, Rodin. Hi hey guys, uh, I'm Rodin. Uh, basically, been playing since 2009. Uh, was in Nullsec for a few times. Got evicted a few times. Basically said, "Fuck that shit. This shit's fucking silly." Um, then I uh, went to Wormhole Space and Lowsec on separate tunes. I've basically been there since 2010. Uh, right now, I'm a member of uh, Wrecking Machine Alliance. We kill a lot of Citadels and Empire. It's really cool. And I've also been uh, managing uh, investment funds for some people and been doing the whole station trading, 
making money for other people type of gig. And I've been writing as well since last year um, for the Neocon, but now I'm uh, start, starting to write for Eventy, so I'm really enjoying the transition. Very cool. Uh, and then, real quick before, so Tony, um, Aaron, you could swear on this show. This is not a family show. This is a show where we all get drunk on. So uh, just in case you guys it's didn't know. Our... Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe he just doesn't like to swear. No, 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 no. I, I swear all the time. I just don't want to get banned off Twitch just yet. <laughs> oh, uh, well, there's very few words. <laughs> like, uh, I think racial slurs are like the only only thing they frown on. So any kind of swearing is fine. Um, and we do drinks. So if you guys have drinks, uh, we'll be doing shots throughout this show. But uh, let's move on to Setonia. Uh, what's up? I've been playing since 2007. The main way I've played the game since about 2008 has mostly been solo and small gang PvP. I've been involved in a lot of successful uh, tournament teams, namely Hydra Reloaded from 2008 to uh, 2015. Rest in peace. Uh, I've been in a lot of NoSec alliances. I've been in the Pandemic uh, Legion. I've been in CVA. I've been in uh, Test Alliance. And now recently I've joined Goonswarm to... Uh, live the no-sec life and to make a lot of isk because now I'm not getting the dank I want isk payouts But yeah, I I do a lot of videos on YouTube about solo PvP uh, They're very uh, very popular especially the ones where I use like low SP uh, low isk ships and That's that's the main part of the game for me mostly is just the uh, Solo PvP and like accessible ships that normally with on characters with less than you know 10 to 20 million SP and that's how I enjoy the game. And, you know, I, d I really like uh, living in NoSec too. Mostly PvPing in NoSec. Okay. Uh, Alright, so that's that's the rundown of uh, of these guys. Uh, Matterall, were you on the bat phone? Are you, uh... Yeah, I need to call in some help. Call in some supers. Let's call in PL to like NC <laughs> targets. <laughs> um... <laughs> He's so, calling up Vince to tell him, don't worry, Vince, you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah, no competition, Vince. You gotta go. <laughs> We've already pre screened well, these characters. And, there's uh... this Setonia guy. He's He looks all right, but. I'm just kidding. I'm just um, kidding, guys. Vince is running for Vince Draken, head of NC. Uh, the alliance I belong to is running for CSM as well. Hey, hey, if he could. Oh, yeah, yeah, what are you, right. what are you right, plugging right, him? Okay. He's no. <laughs> He doesn't have the time okay. to come on, so he calls up Matterall. Right. Hey, can you plug my name real quick and get me <laughs> on the fucking show? That's... Vince, Vince is too big. He'll be on the Batani show or something. Uh, that'll probably never happen, but... All right. Uh, well, I'm going to call an early shot just to get this thing rolling. But uh... Can you wait? I'm in the middle of a Dota game. Dude, it's only one death rain. One death for one shot. It's <gasps> that, that's a, That trade is worth Your team's carrying you anyways. You're fine. Yeah. Really well. Derek, I want to call attention to the people watching over 300, up from 60 just a few minutes ago. That was one what ping. That, that that's was a really one, good viewbot you guys have. One ping to Imperium, and that's what happens. Holy shit. I logged um, on 12 of my, 12 of my <laughs> Twitches. Yeah, I, I logged on yeah. my alts, too. Yeah. <laughs> all, the, all the Twitch alts. Now that, now that Twitch has gone, uh, gone alpha, I can, uh, I can log in all of my Twitch alts. Well, the other thing is that once you get a high number... Um, then you're positioned first, I believe, because it goes in the it number ranks of it, Yeah, it's just, it just, when it shows all the videos, it ranks it on a uh, total number of viewers. So anybody checking out uh, EVE online as far as streaming will be in the first position because of that, which is interesting. So you think yeah. these are legitimate numbers? Hey, I, hey, I, I don't well, know. Yeah. Right <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. It's all the view bots. <laughs> um, all right, so, uh, yeah. I'll let's, tell you let's, how it happens, but. I know, I know how it happens, but uh, let's throw a, th the, holy shit, I can't talk tonight. Um, let's do a shot. I'm pouring. I'm poured up. Oh, you got to increase the team speak uh, thing because there's some people that are falling off there. Oh wait, increase the team speak volume. The size of the. What are you doing? Shots to box. Let's do shots to pause. Oh right. Box. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to move. I'll get that fixed you, once we you do mean the, the shots. Ones that didn't all come in today, so it didn't happen. Well, you got the good ones. Yeah, I got the 1080 in the processor. But I didn't get the motherboard. Oh, Paul has a new computer. No, apparently he doesn't. Not if he doesn't. Not if he doesn't begin with a motherboard. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, no motherboard yet. You got a Fred Flintstone computer. You have to like, or a Gilligan's Island power. Did you get new lipstick, or is that the same kind as last week? It's the same it's kind shit. as last week. Like, <laughs> Cheeto, like, Cheeto. Orange. I just wanted to look good for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, shots. Let's do them. Three, two, one. All right. Um. Oh, check it out. I got some. 
There you go. Is that water? Sarsaparilla. Oh, will. Yeah, so it's a it's white wine spritzer. It's close. It's uh, ginger ale. Yeah, you get a Pap Suetonia. I'll, I'll link it to you. Ginger ale. Um, all right. Um, I like ginger ale. Well, do we Me move too. straight into the question? I know LB had a, a whole like bag full of questions. Well, the plan was that the first half of the show would be the regular show, and then the second half we were going to go into the round robin debate random question. I'm not going to tell you what the fuck's going on thing. So it's like the last the first, half we'll just, first half we'll just let Dirk rant, and then we'll cut him off at about ten o'clock. No, Dirk's not. <laughs> Dirk's not ranting today. <laughs> um. Inevitably, I will get into a rant. But okay, so you so you want to have them speak after after a few drinks or in somebody? Yeah, I was or, I mean, assuming some shots, assuming that and they are going to make him say something stupid. <laughs> the plan was to get well, him I mean, drunk no, and then no let, no him, let him go at it. Like, drinking, but... All right. Uh, well then, I okay. I thought those questions were up first because I figured we'd do that and then just kind of. I mean. Well, shit, that's fine because you know, you know what we can keep, we can keep the uh, we can keep the serious topic serious. Then I mean, you know, look, um, obviously tonight, and again, I don't want to. I'm trying not to like you know, grab on too 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 tight here. Um, Dirk, you cut out. No, or is that just me? I'm that's just you. No, I heard. No, tight. you didn't. You didn't no, okay, no, no, okay, that's me. I can't no, no, hear I, any of you. Yeah, I paused. I I paused. Uh, uh, no, no, her her um, audio cut out altogether. So okay, yeah. So so. Obviously tonight, oh, yeah. you guys had scheduled to have uh, you know have CSM candidates on, and and that was great. I mean, but what we've also had this week, right, is we've had the we've had the summit, so we do have some things that we can talk about from there, um, as well as what has come out of that in terms of changes to the actual CSM itself. So it really is quite loaded on the CSM topic, besides just upcoming type things. So. I don't know where you want to begin there. I mean, you know, I went through tonight and uh, and uh, you know rewatched a couple of the videos because I wanted to take a couple of notes and then watched uh, watched the day four video. Um, I don't know. I'll just start. You know what? Day two. I'll just go back to day two. Uh, um, I, you know, I, my biggest observation from day two was the same observation that it was heading into the summit, and that was that um, Aerith was going to wear a mask and look like Rorschach. Um, no, actually, I didn't know that he was actually <laughs> going to wear a mask, but he did look like Rorschach on the video for those people who haven't seen it out there, um, which, you know, er er Aerith is somebody who he is not anonymous to um, the people, um, you know, on the CSM or to CCP, because obviously you have to disclose your real identity to uh, to CCP when you when you sign up to become a candidate. Um, yeah, he uh, said, uh, can, if I can interrupt, but, he didn't, didn't want to run until he uh, until that requirement went away. Cause he and was that, never and that was new for this past year. Correct. Sorry. So anyways, yes. um, you know, so, so he was the guy, as far as I know, he was the guy with his back to everybody in the Sunday Twitch stream, okay? And then in Tuesday's day two, uh, I think it was Tuesday, day two's, uh, yeah, um, um, recap video, he was the one with the, with the mask that, you know, made him look like Rorschach from, from the Watchmen. But anyways, um, the biggest thing I thought that came out of that video it was only seven minutes long, um, and it was the same thing that I thought going into it was drilling platforms. And when Aerith said um, two hours were allocated to drilling platforms, they took complete advantage of that. Very pleased at what they saw. So in terms of drilling platforms and whatever the plans are related to moon mining and everything that goes along with that, I'm going to say this. Aerith is one of the people that I will take for granted um, a positive response from regarding those, given how big that is as an issue and how much it affects all of New Eden, whether you are somebody who owns a moon, whether you fly a Tech 2 ship, any of that stuff out there. Um, this is a very big topic for 2017. I like the fact that from everybody I've heard, they came away positive. Now, another quote that I had from somebody out there, or I'm going to paraphrase anyways, is that um, um, CCP gave a lot of information. The CSM gave a lot of discussion back. CCP nodded their head and wouldn't necessarily comment regarding some of that feedback. But um, overall, people generally thought it was positive. And, and I like that. Yeah. I like that how'd a lot. You get the, how'd you get the, play, the blow by blow? I didn't get a blow by blow. I, I, you know me. 
what I try to ask CSM members are general questions, right? I want to know yeah. what their feelings were about something. What what did they feel about the? I don't want to know details. Well, I, I think I'm that's the downside. Like, all, I'm not asking. A lot of the questions I would have for like the CSM guys when they come back from a summit is stuff that every single answer would be like, I can't say NDA. Like it, it's all NDA questions is what I want to know. So. <laughs> It sounds like you're trying to get some hope. Like, give me some hope. Don't tell me the details. Just tell me it's good. You know those people out there that fly capital ships for a living, and that is their shit? And and how last year we had the changes to capitals and all that, and you know they thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Look, I don't own a moon, okay? But what I do care about is how big this is for all of EVE um, from both from – both it is a major shift for people out there in terms of income generation, in terms of how you know Tech Two ships are built. Okay, we, you know, we, you know, with 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 Moon Goo that comes out of it. Um, you know, in terms of the economy of New Eden, there is a lot that can go wrong here by switching. You know, you know through this switchover from pause based Moon mining. Um, they are conflict drivers. They are income generators. They are resource providers, and you know, and so much more. So, I mean, this is something where you don't want to fuck it up because it has massive ripple effects across across the game. There's also that whole thing about making uh, groups too independent, meaning you have all the mining you could want in the systems that you have. You can build as much as you want in the systems that you have, and it becomes very safe to just sit and generate uh, power, basically, which is what's happening in Delve. I don't know. You guys should attack and break that place up. Uh, who? PL? Uh, everybody really. <laughs> yeah, everybody why do you want another world war? Why do you want another yeah, world us. war? We're, we're, on, we're doing our own crabbing up north. <laughs> what would we call well, this one? So Derek, you're saying that if Aerith has a warm fuzzy, then we should all have a warm fuzzy about it. I, I think that when you look at the... <laughs> yeah, and Not this really. Is, this is nothing against... No, no. Again, um, um, that he finds the stuff to be, let's see here, very pleased at what they saw, Okay. Um, I don't think that that necessarily bodes well strictly for goons, okay? But I think that Aerith is one of the people who, number one, understands economics and Eve, understands the relationship that moons have to these things out there. And and as opposed to, look, I wouldn't necessarily listen to Aerith about small gang warfare. However, I don't, nece go ahead. I don't necessarily like Aerith, but I would listen that, to her. Right. Are you yeah, so I mean, mean, I mean to Aerith Matterall? So What's that? Are you so, so mean to like Aerith Matterall? Oh, uh, I don't know, because I've had conversations with him. <laughs> I, just feel like I wouldn't necessarily be friends with him. You wouldn't see us hanging out in the beach in Cancun together. On oh, I see. Okay. I got what you're saying. But, and he's not that guy anyway, but the guy is smart. And if you listen to him, he'll walk you through like some amazing steps. And you'll be like, oh, I understand now. So I give him that for sure. Right. So, I mean, I'm not saying let's all put our hopes and dreams into Aerith's you know, particular comment. Um, maybe if Aerith had said nothing, I'd be wondering, hmm, what's going on here? But his sort of, you know, his words corroborated something else that I had heard out there and something else I heard from somebody else. Um, his words were the ones that were public. That's why, you know, I'm, I'm going with those right now. Uh, but but again, I think that this is a very big topic um, for this year. This is the start of that big topic for this year, and and it will continue on. I mean, at some point, we're going to get a dev blog. We're going to get some details regarding it and whatnot, and then eventually it will play and, out out there. And then well, there's I'm, that phenomenally phenomenal, phen I don't know what, something, some secret uh, feature. The phenomenal secret. Up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping they come out with, like, the details of the stuff first because there are times where they'll just release uh, – like when they came out with the Tech Three Destroyers, they're like, "Here's pictures." It's like, I, I mean, the pictures look cool, and like the graphics, but it's like I want to know what they're doing, uh, rather than what they look like. The the graphics and like the whole you know visual stuff can be you know shown at you know Vegas or Fan Fest or one of those things. That's like where you get like the really like aesthetic reveals. But I don't know. It's like I, it feels like most of the time they come out with like the designs first, and then and then the the details later. Uh, going back to, and I'll put this in chat. Well, uh, Selen De Decimus, CSM member, yeah, yeah. you know, incumbent CSM member, Selen Decimus is in channel, okay, you know, in, in the chat channel. I'm sorry, when I'm talking, I can't actually read all this stuff out there because, like, only words only come out, they don't go in at the same time. But uh, it, it sounds like he's saying also positive. So 
Again, it's not that I didn't see him, you know, chatting before. I just didn't have time to uh, kind of respond. And I did see that he said he would come on if we wanted, so we we can bring him in. I'll, if... I'll put this link in chat. But we on, on talking in stations, we'd had an interview with Aerith, and so you can actually hear a lot of the stuff that he lays out, and then you get an idea of what we're talking about. Does he use a voice changer in that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's actually he's voiced like a female. <laughs> you guys ever use? <laughs> Well, that it's not because he's not a female, so it would be the complete opposite, like the other side. Anyway, um, I mean, honestly, I didn't hear a whole lot more from you know, you, you know, from day two. And again, I you know, I tend to be very focused on on hearing about what it is I want to hear about. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, if anybody else you know thought that they heard something from kind of day two, I mean, the people talking that day were Judge Kyle Parthos, era and 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 good old Sullen. Talking um, in the review, not the whole day, like the, not so, the whole session. No, just talking in the review in the review thing afterwards. And you know, what? I, I, I do want to put the link out there. Um, maybe find it. In a well, I, I'm looking for a link too. Like I said, I'll put that uh, out there. Uh, those little reviews, I mean, it, they look like uh, you know ISIS films. Like those guys were gonna uh, be what? in trouble. Yeah. Oh my god! Jeez! Wow. Guard guard terrible. I'm CCB Goddard. These uh, people have uh, broke rules and gay. I don't know why he's got a Russian accent. I, I, I can't do. I can't do the it's Iceland his, thing. It's his hairline. That's the Russian accent. It's his hairline. hairline. I just put the link. I just put the link in the uh, in the Twitch channel. Down at the bottom of that are the are the uh, streams. Now, you know what I will say is this: is that oh man, it takes you out to Facebook. And I'm gonna be honest. I. I do social media by way of Twitter, but uh, I don't have a goddamn Facebook account. That's the. Why you have a daughter, Dirk? You, you log on to her Facebook. Wow, you, no, you had Twitter before Facebook. Facebook, Facebook was probably in so, your time, Dirk. Do you see how many hits they got though? They MySpace. got over ten thousand hits. Oh yeah, I remember MySpace. Yeah, eight, I saw that. 11, eight to ten thousand hits was... per. Yeah, so like there are definitely Eve players on Facebook. Uh, oh, I'm, really not, I'm not with saying thousands they're not. Of people in it. I'm not saying they're not, but it's not like putting it out on YouTube where if you just click on it, you watch it. You know, it's you know, it's nice and easy. I mean, I kept having this thing come up going, "Hey, do you want to log in?" No, I don't want to fucking that's, log in. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say like, what, if you're that's the thing I, they, they changed about Facebook. I freaking hate it. Is you used to just be able to go and look at stuff. You might not be able to go in to look at people's pictures if they're not on your friends list and stuff. But so you use it as a stalking tool, and now you're upset. I never. Do. Oh, well, yeah. Friends, I right? mean, how else? <laughs> no, I, I'm yeah. just saying like. It, it, Stuff that's public, you used to just be able to go there. Now it's you have to log in, you have to make an account. It, it's a fucking pain in the ass. So, what do you think, drunk Canadian? I mean, you know, what are your views on this? He has no views. Drunk Canadian, you're he's... muted. He can't hear you if he's deafened. He's muted and deafened. What? <laughs> what is he doing? That's important. Is he, shit is he playing on. Dota now? Oh, but then my friends made me start another match, so I apologize. Oh my god. But they made you? You can just click no. It's all like PL nerds. They're like, Rain, you have to play Dota with us. They want to start this professional team, and I feel like really overwhelmed because I just wanted to right click on creeps and just like press the Q button. But now that now they're making me go like professional or some shit, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Skeptic Nerd Guy here says that a lot of people who uh, don't want to Reddit uh, will use Facebook to stay in touch with the community, and that's a lot of players. That's... To me, ten thousand on any of the, on those things is significant. I generally just but use you, Twitter. you can still put a YouTube video on Facebook, and you can put it on Reddit as well. You can hit both communities if you're just using YouTube. Yeah, There's no I, reason to use Facebook. It's so you're cringy. just uploading a no, video. No, no, no. But no, yeah. but I'm just saying as a medium because, like, for INN at least, we don't even have social buttons. We should, and we probably will after today because I didn't realize there's so many people on you know these other things. Reddit, yeah, but you know. Well, I mean, you don't know that. Well, hold on. You don't know that there were eleven. I, I mean, I saw eleven thousand, but that could have included me. You know, who obviously does not have a. Okay, you know, so there were ten thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Woman's but... account, but yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it doesn't mean that it was only because of Facebook. It meant because they were putting these things out no, there. No, and... I think that was the Facebook count, or was that the YouTube count? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I don't really question. use Facebook or question. or Reddit. I I just use Twitter, and if it's not on Twitter, then and I, even half the time on Twitter, I don't catch it. What are you guys' favorite uh, social tools, by the way? Like, what's actually getting Twitter. used? I mean, Twitter. I like Twitter, Twitter, but the one Twitter's issue with Twitter easy. is obviously you have 140 characters. But it's very easy to spread things like dev blogs, links, yeah, that's, that's things the like community. If it's, if it's yeah. just a quick little kip thing that you're going to throw out there, uh, you just type it. But, I mean, you can just put links if it's like to – that's where I get a lot of links to stuff that I'll look at. Is I Yeah, and I find, it, I find it super easy to keep that away from, like, my personal life, whereas, like – 
Facebook, I'd have to make a whole new Facebook. I'd have to be like, okay, what's my like fake first name and fake last name? And like, not everyone has that. So you might do an Eve character, you might not. I don't know. I find it super weird. I only, I only consume social media. I don't put anything on it. So I have Facebook, Reddit, and uh, Twitter. But so, it's only for cons consumption. I don't put anything on it. Since we're pushing these guys to the back end of the show, um, um, it means we've only got 34 oh, minutes sorry. until we get there. So, so, so let you know. I mean, why don't we move on here? Um, again, the day, the day three video. Just while you know, while, while we get there, was Zanurio Hyde, uh, Zanuria Hyde, and Gorski. Um, they began by talking about balance. Um, obviously, things like nullification came up. Uh, you know, Hyde mentioned nullification came up. The Tech Three Cruiser rebalance um, looks to be looks to be pretty significant. Um, at least by you know, the other way, kind of Hyde was commenting about it. Uh, Gorski mentioned something about autocannons, and they all kind of chimed in on alpha ships and fits and things like that. So we we know that with guys like Gorski and Hyde, that that the balance uh, uh, the the balance meeting was probably going to be pretty big. Um, you know, for them, that's something that they care you know that they care very much about. Obviously, they mentioned the Rorqual. Um, you know, I guess you would have to think that chances are the Rorqual will not be what it is for long um now you know when that is is a different story but right, the days next... of the battle work world are probably well, uh, what's like getting patch. nerfed the drone capability or the the invuln thing that it got that, that's a good question who knows I'm, I, let's put it this way it's not going back to being the work world from six months ago but chances are it's not going to all, be the you know battle all they said that was is. that uh, we gave our suggestions, the CSM gave their suggestions, and CCP countered with some very creative things that they yep. hadn't thought about. So it could be interesting. Oh, so it sounds like it's more than just a numbers tweak on, on stuff. Yeah, I don't think it is. It's probably... Yeah, it's probably a bigger concept tweak, to be honest. I mean, it's pretty silly to have, you know, an uh, <laughs> inherent industrial ship have ridiculous amounts of combat capability. That's, that's, that's dumb. Yeah. Well, now, I mean... one, thing, one thing Hyde said was is that... Uh, so this is what he said. He said uh, they've brought up in this regard to balancing. They've brought up everything, so don't worry about it. Now I know another guy who said this week that we don't need to worry about tough conversation he's having, but that's a completely different uh, that's a completely different thing. Um, <laughs> they they also talked about they also talked about skins. Okay, they talked about this you know the the yes. store, um, yes. the you know the, and uh, and skins came up. Now at one point, yeah, yeah, they don't like. Apparently, people don't like the the uh, I don't know what do you want to call them dull or drab colors. Uh, See, let's call them. Let's you call mean them like mil let's call the them green military. Skin? Like I colors. like the green, glinty skin. green skins that look just uh, like their normal. Skull. No, 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 no. You have to keep it from looking like uh, No Man's Sky, whatever that is. Well, no, it's like I'm fine with well, green skins. I wouldn't want green skins on Galente ships, but I don't fly Galente like ships. Like the CB skin is a nice green skin. Like a, a but green the fucking... skin. The Galente ones, where it literally looks like they just kind of like blurred everything well, together. That's, like, that's, no, it looks like trash. That's your problem. You're yeah, flying Galente ships, legacy. the ugliest ships in the game. Yeah. See, see, and this is what's no. Even just Jim J99 out there says, "I want my ship to have flair." Um, Zanuria, and th and this went back to a conversation that we had in in, in Open Comms channel yesterday, and it, it's like I wasn't really joking about it so much as Zanuria mentioned something about you know what. Um, um, what the, you know, what clothes that you wear in the game, or what skin you have, it can be demoralizing for the enemy. One of the things that I brought up, and, I'm, and I am going to bring it up here because I think I, I think there is something to this. I don't know why all of these straight white guys want pink skins. I think there's something psychological to it. And now, and now, somebody else had said, <laughs> some somebody somebody else had said that you know what, it's demoralizing if you get beat by. Uh, what a pink skin ship wearing well, motherfucker! It, I mean, well, and, Dirk was getting and, all and Freudian is, well, on why this. Why is that? Well, I mean, uh, psychologically, why is that? Well, I, I so think, we were we were discussing are we, are this. Are we making fun of things that are? No, I think essentially what it comes down to is pink is generally associated as a feminine color, and it's it's probably just the whole like you know old school I guess you could call it misogynist viewpoint where it's like. If you get beat by a girly skin, then you're girly type of thing. I, I, I don't it's think people directly pink, viewed it as that way, but if you get down to like the Freudian level, who knows, maybe. Maybe that's why people are a little more offset if they get beat by a pink ship. I just do find it weird, okay, that where people want um, a pink skin, all right, is in is in things like spaceships Shots. or, or um, a, other forms of aggressive hardware, whether, whether well, it be spaceships um um vehicles or guns Weapon in a first skins. person shooter 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a great juxtaposition, you know, from a, from an artistic concept. I mean, pink destroyer of some sort. Well, Noise is saying it's very it demoralizing <laughs> if you get beat by a fleet of pink procures. I think that's just because you get beat by a fleet of procures. But why is that? Is that, be, is that I would be more upset that I got beat by mining ships instead of... something that is, that is, what, not, not aggressive in men? It's the or opposite something? of what these games are. So think of, like, like this game, Grimdark. Think of, like, CSGO, it's a tactical shooter. Think of Call of Duty, it's a tactical shooter. Everything's tactical, everything is all of drab, everything is camo. All the tryhards, they're going to put on their best camo shit to go out there and, and do their thing. And then there's guys, this guy's going to come bebopping down the lane with a fucking pink AK-47 and waste everyone with one-shots and like, lols. Just joking, I'm only joking. Really I'm only pretending to be retarded. <laughs> I, is it I, some I, sort of appropriate appropriation of 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 a there, feminine kind of culture well, as though it's weaker no. and if i beat you with something weaker therefore i'm better do you remember my comment like how in the 20s like pink was a men's color like color hasn't really been owned by any sort of group besides i don't know maybe gays who own the rainbow so that's like that's not really fair so there's no pink in the rainbow color. rain I mean, technically, pink's a light red. <laughs> that's, that's or a all the There's red. no pink in the rainbow. Well, light red is the manly version of pink. What? They Not get purple <laughs> and rainbow. Salmon <laughs> color shorts don't count. Salmon. <laughs> um, but no, like, I mean, I don't. I think it's like people just like, like, if you think League of Legends, so you know, most gamers are generally male or whatever the fuck you want to argue, or I guess technically they're female, depending what study you want to look at. Like, if you look at things like League of Legends, like, I love Valentine's Day and, like, Halloween because they come out with awesome-looking skins. And, yeah, I love the, like, pink, girly heart skins, but maybe, like, obviously other people do, too, because League of Legends continuously makes it. And I guess League isn't really grim, dark, it's not super edgy, but they do it's have, like, pretty cartoony. super... Yeah, it's cartoony, but they also have, like, super buff, like, manly heroes sometimes, and it's just, like... Well, all of them are. All, all the dudes are, like, massively yeah, like chiseled the, ab guys, but, and all the chicks have, like, double have, D's. Do they have any realistic-looking yeah. guys with, like, big guts and, like, kind of... With the exception yeah, of Jinx. Jinx yeah. is, like, the yeah, one yeah. exception to that rule that doesn't have, like, double D's and, like, massively, like, like basically wearing a bikini into combat. But yeah, but... robot hands, man. It was just something that I started to think about the like other day, that, that there must be some reason why... And, I think I think it's just and... people like it. Like if it looks good, they'll like it. Like I, it's it stands yeah. out. Like oh. blue isn't my favorite color, but like the Quave Tristan skin, I absolutely love. So it, it's just. It do you love it because there's not an option of something better though? No, because I think the Serpenta skin is really good. I think the you the like winter one. I forget what that one's called, but that one I think is also really good. But I still prefer the Quave skin. The it Quave skin is too good. And if you could make your own skin. It, it may look good, but the people that are asking for it are the ones least likely to probably use that color for something they drive around in or something they use in real life. So why is it in a video game or in another place where they're acting more hyper-aggressive than they normally would, that is the color that they choose to fall back on? I mean, because, you, something it's because it's their color. online personalities, so like they don't have to be judged like by going to, driving a pink car to work Maybe. or wearing a pink shirt at work. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what if what if they could see it any way they wanted to, but then I could see it the way I wanted to? So maybe oh, it... you mean you where you place a skin on somebody else? No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what Why would you pay money to pick. skin someone else's chip? I'm you wouldn't pay money, no, but you could, like, I, I would... disable skins on your end or something. Yeah, like, like, I don't want to see your... Like, if I could shut it off, it's kind of like an ignore... I... Uh, you're, I, you're I find it funny that like pink skin. the people's desire anyway. for pink skins has turned into this whole... I think you know, it's, it's, a, it's a it's a tactic to harass yeah. people to He's kill them with a certain skin. On. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I br I bring it up specifically, okay, because there's a number of there's a lot of stuff that's going on out there, okay, regarding appropriation. And one of the things is you know, or or the what is it, the patriarchal society type stuff where you know what the whole concept of boys are blue, girls are pink, kind of a thing. I know um, green is in. And how they disagree with that, and you know, you can't put that on people. And I'm wondering what the reverse of that is for the people who sit there and wouldn't normally be a pinky in real life, but want to represent that as a sign of I'm going to dominate you with what is seen as a weaker color. So it it's um you think it's being meta then basically meta gameplay to humiliate meta you on top because i can't kill i, I, I think can't kill you enough i think it has been turned around i think that it has been turned around to we're going to own this thing that is normally seen as weakness in order to dominate you i'm going to beat your butt wearing a pink skin 
but nobody sees it. I was gonna say I, she's fucking I stupid in Eve Online because every if, like nobody zooms in that much. Skins in Eve are generally stupid. Period. Unless you're flying a capital. We, we don't you know. You watch how... a YouTube video of Eve, you see red squares and you see other colored squares. You don't see ships unless somebody we, zooms in on it, and they also, don't see anything else. We also don't you do allow. PvP is zooming out so you can see the whole grid. Like nobody sees the skins except when you're in the, the station. It's usually when you're like waiting around on a fleet battle, you like play with your skins, and then like people are like, "Oh, look at nice skin." <laughs> but like when anything's ever happening, then Check no, me out. There's no, yeah, there's no skinning happening. And it's usually people just making that annoying noise when you change skins over and over again. There's a noise associated with it. Yeah, when you switch skins, it does this like weird little. Does it really? Not know that. Yeah. Have you ever heard the noise it makes when you put a pink skin on? You got to do it outside, like you go into your. I imagine table. like I, uh, I'm totally joking. It doesn't... Squeaking and. It's well, pretty much super annoying and the worst. I wish you could turn that off. Like, I think sure of skins. Can. I think of skins in terms of how they they. Sp they uh, dress up buses, you know, like a. Oh, like you wrap a bus with an advertisement. That's it. That's or it. Yeah. Advertisement for our British friends. Yeah, advertisement. Oh, could you yeah. imagine you could put your alliance advertisement on the side of your Titan? Well, that was Everybody what they did. were going for, wasn't it? I mean, the idea of skins got everybody happy. Well, people because... are always wanting a uh, corp logos or, or alliance logos yeah. on there as well. You could get sponsorships, like a Red Bull sponsorship, and have your Red it's Bull. It's like NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have better technology now, right? Because the they, they recently they recently yeah. improved the skin technology, so that could be possible pretty soon. That's right. Actually, right, right, they, yeah. that's how they could stick you know your kills on your ship now, and that was the same thing. They can actually put a decal on it now because the shading I think affects it. But uh, you know that exists as still kind of a, not a promise, but you know like an imaginative uh, feature that they could give out. But they've been kind of holding that back for years now. Yeah, I mean, how much value are you really getting out of that, you know? Because we don't really, besides you looking at your own skin, I mean, who well, goes out there? Well, the pink skin looks, looks at shit they, on people. I was gonna say, the pink warp, skin has made the most money for CCP out of all the skins. Uh, and that blows my mind, cool. man. It really but I mean, does. the thing was is they didn't even make money from that. They gave it all to charity. Hmm, okay. Give it all to charity. Oh, well, don't bring up no. charity. Mm -hmm. Nope. I just what like happened to the next skin day, that's being talked about in uh, well in the chat okay. here. But um, uh, yeah, so to close out day three, I just want to make this statement: uh, Zenurio claims Holy to be cow, the first real? candidate to run on a CSM reform platform. You know what? He may have been the first candidate to actually put in his forum bio and actually pretend that they were running on a CSM reform platform. Uh, however, the idea of CSM reform has been around for years, um, and and if what we've seen so far is the major achievement in CSM reform, then I'm not sure what that says about you know necessarily his platform because uh, we move on to day four, and we actually get into what came of of CSM reform. Um, this video was was from Bob Mon and Nash, who apparently come as a pair. I mean, these two like travel together, um, <laughs> like in, in a lot of different situations out there. I will say, Bob Man, Bob Mon looked older on uh, on this video, um, which which made Nash look old and tired, and and Nash actually looked tired as a son of a bitch, which the, it actually is revealed at the end of the video that he is uh, definitely tired. It was definitely tired because they had a night out, I guess. The no, night before. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, what was it? So to or Jintan was saying that um, half of the work that they did was done at the bars. Makes with sense. CCP, Absolutely. So, Which I mean, totally makes sense. sense. That's where it's work. Happen. Like they have the official meetings in the office, and then they go get the the actual like discussions and work done over over a few pints or whatever. Yeah, loosen everybody up. Yeah, shots. Uh, I'm called shots, by the way. But the uh, the CSM reorg did come up. Um, I am going to post it here in the Twitch chat. Um, that right there is the. So basically, the CSM white paper um, is is basically gone. It has been archived as as a historical document at this point. Uh, long may it never be read again. And what they have come out with is now what I would call more of a mission slash information statement. Um, it generally spells out what it is they're there to do. Um, it's not really what I'll call a guiding document as much as it is informational. It is informational enough. Um, or as information as informative as it needs to be, um, given you know, uh, well, especially if what you believe is the CSM is a focus group, or you know, or generally a player advocacy panel. If what you thought, okay, due to some discussions that have taken place in the past, that it is there to you know work for player agency or you know become some sort of pseudo 
I don't know, development uh, team. player rights organization or something like that. That's not what it is. Okay. It really is not what it is. Everybody needs to curb their kind of, you know, enthusiasm for that thing, you know, rein in their expectations. It is, it's a focus group or player advocacy group. And, and this right here is really more than enough words to kind of spell that out. If you don't know what the CSM does by now from reading this um, um, much shortened document, I don't know what to tell you. It basically spells it out. I mean, it's, it's, you read it, it's, it, I never actually, I have to admit, I never read the white paper, but I read this one right before the show, uh, the new thing, and it, it, it basically says exactly what we've been saying the CSM is or should be. You're, ba it's basically a feedback group. CCP comes and says, this is what we plan on doing with the game. What do you think about it? What do you think the players will think about it? They give their responses, their feedback. CCP takes that and goes, okay, well, we're going to do it anyway. Or, okay, well, we'll tweak these things. Or So it's like, it's a back and forth. So the, CC the CSM does, I think, incur changes in the game. But it's not like they're going to go, when people go to the CSM, it's like, I'm going to implement this new mechanic. Because that's probably never going to happen. But you could it's affect... It's a feedback the group. Yeah. Yeah, you could affect the mechanics that CCP already plan on implementing, but you could cause, you know, slight changes, modifications to those. With that said, if you're looking at a CSM candidate and he's saying, I'm going to make wormholes great again, he might as well be saying, you know, I'm going to put Dr. Pepper in the water fountain. Fuck yeah, Dr. Pepper. Recess That'd be all amazing. day. Like, hey. Recess all day. No school on Fridays. Yes. Yes. Vote me I'm student council that president. Guy. That's the same thing. Like, you Pizza on Monday. For I mean, uh, I'm kind of, or Doritos, sorry. Kind of curious how uh, why it took this long to kind of for CCP to say, "Hey guys, this is really how we use the CSM." You know, I um, mean, all these years that we kind of everyone had their own idea of what the dang group did. Well, and I wonder if it was if it was actually CCP that because I don't think that it was ever different from that. I think it was more the players' expectation, which uh, from my my first impression, like when I first started playing the game, the first couple of years, and I saw the CSM stuff. It was a lot of the candidates running on platforms like, I'm going to do this for the game, I'm going to do this for yeah. the game, which gave me the impression of like, oh, the CSM actually gets this stuff ideas, added right? to the game. Yeah. And then I found out later. So I think it's more the players and the, the candidates that are running kind of like puts this ideal on the rest of the player base that that's what the CSM is for. And I don't know if CCP ever... Uh, stated that that's surely what they for. caught on to that. I mean, surely. <laughs> Does the, the the new white paper change anybody's mind? Since there's only ten spots now, it's going to be more. Complete. Well, I didn't get to that. Oh, thanks, oh thanks, sorry. Yeah, thanks, yeah, for, sorry. Wow. thanks for front rutting. Sorry, thanks sorry. God, man, all. Yeah, I'm going to be quiet. We got people sorry. here need to talk. Didn't you read the no. show notes that I didn't make? I'm going. I'm going to disagree with with uh, CSM candidates putting out platforms are the ones that change people's minds. Okay. Uh, it is very easy to put out a platform of I'm going to change the world or I'm going to reform the CSM or I'm going to make wormholes great again or something like that. Why? Because you know what? What else are you going to say? How are you going to differentiate yourself out there? All right. Um, not by saying, you know what? I've been playing Eve a while. I've got a lot of experience. I think that I could bring some good feedback to, C to, to CCP. I think that I could bring some ideas, and I think that I will be able to communicate with a constituency out there that will help me be a good feedback me mechanism for CCP on the CSM. That doesn't sound very good, but people know that, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of, I need to get voted for, so I'm going to go out there and I'm going to create this thing that uh, is going to try and sell what it is I do and in the process, I'm going to try and prove that I know something through a forum post and a platform. We know that that's not how it works, okay? But it's a little bit too simple to just sit there and say, you know what? I think I'm a good player. I think I've got something to offer. And 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 here's why. No, let me tell you how I'm going to make shit great again. Um, but likewise, CCP also did themselves a disservice by, in some previous CSMs, talking about all of the different things that the CSM had its hands into, whether it be marketing, whether it be just just every last little thing. There was there was one CSM period there where they talked about it, and it made it sound as though the CSM was was like involved in almost every aspect of CCP life, down to the freaking cafeteria food. And it really made people think that you know what? Wow, these guys have way more say than what it is they do. But all that was was CS was CCP saying what they had directed the CSM to look at. 
right? Mm-hmm. That wasn't the CSM actually doing anything. No, no, it CCP wasn't, it wasn't the ultimate, CSM. CCP has the ultimate guiding hand when it comes to CSM, and it shows them what they're going to look at. It shows them what they're going to focus on that year. So for you to come in and say, well, I'm going to undo the nano nerf, and they come out and say, well, no, we're not looking at nano. We're looking at missile launchers this year. Well, there goes your platform, right? That, that was actually a conversation that we had today. Okay, uh, um, in, in in the open comms channel um, regarding regarding what makes a good CSM, and I'm going to be completely honest with everybody out there. I believe that um, um, people who are generalists, okay, are more than likely the best people to be on the CSM because, okay, because you don't know over the course of a CSM term what the topics are that are necessarily going to come up or, or that are going to get the most attention or anything like that. And that people need to know more than a very narrow kind of scope of things, which is why I have tended to fall back on, I'll be honest, okay, um, um, some high pri- profile null set candidates who go into these things because despite what people think out there, um, null set candidates, especially ones who have been around a while, have been in some positions of leadership, they tend to have a good generalist view of things um, as part of you know their, their organizations. It's not to say that somebody from high sec can't have that same thing, but if what you get is either A, uh, a null sec candidate who sits there and says, well, high sec sucks, fuck them, or you get a high sec candidate that says, ah, the null sec cartels, they run Eve. Guess what? They probably have too narrow a scope of really what you want as a CSM candidate. You want somebody who can be additive in a number of different ways because if you pick somebody who's narrow and their topic does not come up in any great consequence, they were a waste that year. Yeah. So I'm just throwing that out there. Um, you know, take it, take it for what it's fucking worth, but whatever. That's just me fucking, you know, shooting my mouth off early in the show. Usually it happens later. So then what happened at CSM Summit? Uh, I don't know. Then it like closed Advent out camp. and... Uh, <laughs> And then. But okay, but okay. So, so, so the big change that was that was pretty much announced today was the fact that, and we've got 12 minutes left before we go before we move on to this, uh, before we move on to the next section, which is these guys telling us what their platforms are and how they're going to make wormholes great again, um, is that they are reducing the number of CSM members from 14 to 10. Okay, now before anybody freaks the hell out out there, it used to be seven. Okay, now for people who told you that the alternates mattered, they really didn't. Okay, it was seven. Okay, up until, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago, a few years ago, whatever the heck it was now. Now, it does have some 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 consequence here. Okay, when they moved to 14 and when they shifted over to the to the single transferable vote system, it did result in us having some more diversification than what we used to. If you think null sec CSM or null sec CSM members dominate the CSM now, you should have seen it back when it was just seven. Back when it was first past the post, okay, meaning kind of a winner take all, and whoever got the most votes was number one, number two, number three, number four, right? The combination of the STV and 14 people allowed for more diversification. It allowed some some candidates to get elected um, who maybe didn't have the big organizations behind them or massive name recognition. And by shifting it from 14 to 10, that's probably going to tighten that up some. Mm -hmm. But I also think that 14 is probably too cumbersome, to be quite honest. So I understand it, you know, but it is going to have probably some detrimental effect on the ability for not so well or candidates who are not as well known within large organizations or organizationally backed to be able to make kind of you know get in there in some you know back end positions that's what i was thinking because uh the 14 csm we have this year like the vast majority of them are all null set guys and obviously, it's just you know with the right. I mean, but back when it was seven, they literally all were. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't playing back then, so I, I mean, that makes sense. But I mean, the thing is, like, there's way more people in high sec, but there's way more organization in null sec as far as like, you know, getting large groups to go a specific route. And so with ten, I think you're gonna see the same thing. Like, it's gonna probably be these big giant organizations because they'll get people that don't even. They'll go vote in the CSM, but they don't know any of the candidates. But they're like, you know, uh, you know, 
Vince Draken or Matani or you know or Grath or they all said this is this is our the people that we're we're vetting and so I'm just gonna go vote for those guys. Uh, with the single transferable vote thing, like I've had that system explained to me three times and the math still boggles my mind, so I don't I don't necessarily understand it. We're doing shots. Yeah, you know, I'm doing a shot. I'm doing a shot to anybody who is running for the CSM. Okay, I think that you should. Um, I just think that you know everybody else. Yeah, you know, but okay, I'm not doing a shot to you guys. I'll do a but shot to you guys it. later. You know, I'm, I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm doing a shot. Yeah, but but fuck it. Okay, but comma fuck it. Um, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm doing. A, I'm doing a shot to this summit. I think it was a successful summit, and um, you know. Here's to, I don't know what, you know, the upcoming election, and, you know, we'll get to that shortly. But, yeah, 14, 10, whatever. Go ahead. Keep talking. Yeah, I mean, that's a big disconnect, though, isn't it, you know, as far as the being organizationally backed, especially for places like HiSec and maybe, you know, pockets of uh, low sec where there, there's, there's no in-game reason to be organized in that large of a scale and, in turn, resulting in uh, this inherent kind of membership that can you know, potentially back you as a CSM candidate, so, you know. No, do you think they should divide the game up into ridings? God, no. I, I, before you guys go down this road in, in a second here, can I ask you guys, I'd really take advantage of the show here, but I was thinking of doing uh, CSM interviews since CSM Watch looks like they're kind of quiet right now. Uh, I've been talking to them, and there's... You keep asking the whole world, should I do this? I, and I, yeah, I'm I asking the whole world. I'm asking the whole world, should we do interviews with CSM people? Should that happen this year, or... When he just... says we, he does not mean us. He means, he means should Matterall and anybody totally should, find... Man. Talking yeah, totally in stations, should. should we take up that mantle and, and try yeah. to get as many I mean, as we if, can? If CSM Watch, you know, isn't, you know... If, if Cap Stable's not going to do it, somebody better do it. And, and is that good content? I mean, do you guys uh, do you guys want it's to see that? It's super helpful for folks who can't be fucking bothered to read the forums. Because, and I agree, because I think for me, one time, uh, the first time it was done, um, I had a great time listening to the stuff. What was great content while I was like going to work out or doing something like that. And on the other hand, um, when it actually did change my mind recently, I think as far as the, the last year, I listened to, uh, I changed my vote to the guy from uh, Red Frog. I was like, that's the guy I'm going to vote for based on the interview. So it, it did kind of help, although I've kind of been a critic of it in the past because I thought it was kind of king making when they would get together and analyze. And then I talked to Lank, who puts the stuff together, and God bless him, he did a ton of work with the, all these guys to do that stuff. And I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I like you guys because you guys, uh, you know, are kind of like playing this kingmaker role. And I just thought that was kind of silly. And then he's like, well, it was fun. <laughs> was it really kingmaking though? I mean, no, it... well, it does it, does it, yeah, I think Bobman got a, trashed, you know, in the. I mean, if they, so if none of those candidates appeared in that type of format of interview, could I think it have changed the result. Sure. I think, um, uh, and I, I forget his name, and I'm sorry, but the guy from SMA. Um, uh, Kyle? Kyle, Kyle, right. Nice guy. Um, and he did a fantastic job on his interview, and everybody liked him and gushed about him, like the whole next show or whatever. But uh, Bob Munn, you know, came in, and they trounced him. And, uh, and, and that doesn't mean he didn't deserve it necessarily, but they, they kind of had a lot of ammo on him. Other people kind of got, I think uh, it was revealing to me that, Gorski kind of lost his cool when they brought up Matani and there was just a lot of tension there and you could tell. So there was definitely things that come out and do influence the vote. So I don't know if they're king makers, but they were kind of playing that role. And when I talked to Lank, I uh, took it back because I realized I was wrong for saying that in the first place. Yeah, I mean, as a, as a source material, though, I think it's, <laughs> it's very important, to be honest with you. I mean, just looking at uh, if you look at the CSM section of the forums right now, it, it's very lopsided who's getting the views. So uh, folks who may not have that instant name recognition could really use something like that kind yeah. of platform. Yeah, but those really aren't the guys. Out. Those aren't the guys that get asked to interview. I mean, they try to interview well, everybody. Well, they gotta put themselves out there and like, hey, can you, you know, can, is there room for me? They, they, gotta, they gotta be out there and put themselves out. Right. If I interview Vince Draken, like. You know, the guy has a block support. Um, he's somebody that I call upon anyway for expertise. Uh, he doesn't need the exposure, whereas this guy, you know, who, uh, you know, is doing only knows about 50 people in low sec or in high or you know high sec. He doesn't know who I am. I don't know who he is. Like, you know, those are the guys that need the exposure, that need the interviews. I think so. You cut off the lower 20 that aren't ever going to compete, the joke candidates, and there are a few. 
And then you take off the top 20%, uh, guys who everybody knows, and you try to hit the middle there to say, well, we'll shake up at least half the election, 50% or something like that. Or we cage fight them. You guys, you know, two at a time, I'll pick a topic that you guys both disagree on, and we'll cage fight you. That actually might be a pretty cool format, man. <laughs> that may actually may be more revealing than, than one-on-ones. Well, it'll give the opportunity for somebody to, you know, get the exposure that they wouldn't otherwise, and, you know, potentially show that some people that aren't part of the larger blocks can compete idea-wise with them. I, I am mean, really, the chat. I you am really, the chat. You, know, you really do have to have to ask yourself if, you know what, going on that interview is going to help or hinder you, okay? Um, because Yeah, because I'm going to be rough. I'm not going to be uh, nice or whatever well, interview you do, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't mean you. I mean, look, my 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 belief, okay, is that uh, is that the the interviews, okay, are more of a media based gimmick, okay, than they are necessarily informational for all of the for all of the populist voting out there, okay. I think that they are a public service that is put out, um, but generally speaking, are not necessarily uh, they don't probe enough, okay. They don't really get into you know. Um, um, you know, really trying to talk about what somebody knows or or anything like that. Um, they're kind of plat. They're just m- more audio platforms for kind of platforms in a way. All right, I said platforms twice, and I use it in two totally different meanings there. But whatever, we speak. Your English inner here. monologue um, is slipping out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. That being said, all right, some people can pick up points. Okay, because they can communicate effectively in that setting. Other ones ruin themselves because they don't sound good on audio. They don't know how to respond to a question fast enough, or they don't know how to answer the question, um, you know, effectively, and it hurts them in the, you know, you know, you know, in the whole thing. So you, so you almost have to ask yourself: Is going on this thing but, beneficial to me? But that's not a good interviewer if you're just trying to. And this is what I thought kind of happened last time: is there was a lot of like uh, gotchas, or that's the that's what the uh, the research was it was a very antagonistic view towards the candidate, which I understand, but um, it's not that. It's to draw out their seriousness about it, to draw out if you know how much they really want it, and to uh, to figure out you know how much they actually know, because those are the only things that count going into this thing. What right. do you know, and how committed are you to the process? Well, which I, I do. The, totally the other point say that, so, that you know, the... anybody who's on this show tonight as a candidate, okay, nobody out there listening now, okay, or listening in replay or anything like that should uh, should sit there and say that this was the forum that that really showed what these people are capable of. Nor do I think that on any interview it is because so much of what happens during the course of a CSM term, okay, is not necessarily by audio. It's not necessarily by how you can, um, you know, respond to a question on the fly, verbally, you know, it is more how can you, uh, how can you communicate effectively a lot of times in writing or in chat with people that you're not seeing face to face or listening to immediately so some people are good at kind of that you know that verbal kind of back and forth other ones are incredibly intelligent people um about eve and about what it is that they would express but more in writing which could potentially bode well for them with the way the CSM interacts, say, the, the in majority of the channels. CSM is done through chat channels and, and emails and stuff like that, as opposed to you know sit down talks. Like that's probably a smaller portion. Yeah, but I mean, if talking to the CSM is anything, we've heard that all their a large portion of their work gets done at the pub. So if these guys can't socialize, <laughs> yeah. right? Pub, okay. If you are if you are <laughs> great at <laughs> if you are, drink. if you are yes, good at uh, yes, doing right. that should be a, that should be a primary question. Do you drink? Well, the thing. Is- if you if you're good at incept oh you cut out rain. Uh, I was gonna say oh. I'm pretty sure there are plenty of candidates who don't drink, but I mean that doesn't mean you can't go to a pub. It doesn't mean they can't go right. to the pub and socialize. Uh, you, you have yeah. to be a social person you get a to Pepsi be able to and, uh, talk You just to you just got to be good at inception to put level. ideas in the C- in CCP. Then I would I would vote against you for being weird. That's not. I mean, who goes to a pub and doesn't drink besides me? DDs. Sketchy <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Mormons. <laughs> Spies. <laughs> so I'll come out as uh, a candidate that's running that doesn't drink. So yeah, but at the same time, I can I can chat with the best of them at the bar. So yeah, yeah. Oh, there you I go. Still love you, Ace. It's cool. Still love you. Uh, all right. So we hit the one hour mark. Uh, so we'll do a shot. And oh fuck, Dirk. 
What? Or rain or no one's recording. Oh no. <laughs> okay guys, we have to start everything over again. All right. No, uh, no, all right. So no, we're going to close no, the don't. we're going to close the show and we're going to start no, no, over. No, you're not. No, no, no just keep it going. I'm busy. We're, we're not going. Gonna... I will give you we're the audio file off. when we're Skeptic. done. Skeptic. Yeah. You can get the audio file. That's oh, what okay. I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I I got the I keep it. Watch it on replay. I have I have OBS record it. Uh it, you just have to take the audio off the video, I think. I don't know if I have a program that does that, but I can I can show you how to do that. I knew nobody was going to remember that. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to be quiet now so these guys can talk. They came a long way to be here. All right. Shot, shots. 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 They came a long way. Are they? You're so okay, you guys are still at your computers, right? Uh, I hate to. I hate to interrupt, Jordan. Can I? Can I just give you five seconds of a, yeah. of, a, of a pitch? Okay. I, I apologize. I just want to come on and I want to talk about Dirk, you, Drayden, Rain, and possibly Rocket. Um, you know, the Imperium has this thing called the tournament coming up during while we're drinking. And I wanted to invite the best of the best of the best to join for a team that really all you got to do is come in, shoot Asher, and then we uh, we walk away. We moonwalk. All I'm saying. Uh, it, like, me, and Asher doesn't know this is happening? I, well, you know, he's everywhere. He's gonna be. But you know what? I can't, I can't stop him from knowing that we're going to shoot him. But Drayden, I want you. I want Dirk. I want Rain. And I want Rocket. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm the only Imperium guy out of all this. I'll, you I'll, have I'll get him on a kill a mail. I'll, on Rocket, I'll probably have to. This is just your way of like confessing. Wow, well, I just, I just, I just. If I gank Asher, I'll probably have to pack my bags. But that's all right. Are, like, I'll do it. Capitals allowed in this tournament because otherwise I don't yeah, know if he can make it. I will it. give you details. All I want to tell you is, look, I've, I've been, I've been hounding Dirk. Dirk was like, bro, you know, uh, wild. Shut the fuck up. And. uh... And so I'm here. I had to do it. I had to crash it. I had to say, I had to come in here, Drayden. I had to rain, and I had to, you know, find Rocket. I'll dress up as a squirrel, Rain. I'll, I'll make him love me like he loves you. I will do this for this. I will do this for the Imperium. Oh, a doppelganger squirrel or whatever that is. <laughs> it's fucking commitment. Sneak into a room, tie her up, put it in a closet, I, and dress I gotta in do, a squirrel I gotta costume. Do, I got to do this for the greater good. J it's just real quick, what, when does this begin? Uh, so we're going to do it in April. Uh, it's a couple right, of weekends then why the fuck are you rushing it tonight? Just, uh, to, just to, the team. So I don't know if you've ever met the, uh, the yeah, bureaucracy the of the Imperium. If you don't have your your shit in called ducks in a line, uh, you know bureaucracy doesn't work by you know seat of the pants. So I've just got to come out here, tell you people that I love you, and also to build the team. I'm calling it Rogue One. Oh, I haven't seen the movies, but I'm pretty dude, sure you are Mr. Fucking the movies, originality. Man, good. Yeah. So I got. So uh, listen, listen. All I'm trying right now is to free Laz, which as soon as I get Laz means I got a lease. If I get you guys, I'm it still sounds Laz like I'm the only lease. Imperium guy on. Like that's about to gank no, no, another I'm, Imperium I'm, guy. Yeah. Oh, oh, also, oh, Elo Knight. I don't know if he's here tonight. He said. Do you yes. want me to ask Elo? No, Elo said you. yes. Elo said yes. Elo has. Said, right, did he say yeah. yes or did he say gonna, fuck yeah, bud? If Elo's, if Elo's <laughs> in and he's the FC, then yeah, I'm in. Well, I, have you have you met you people? It's like it's a bunch of it's. A, this is like this is literally it's a, it's like a it's a it's a tower of ego. There's not a way that I could tell any of you to do anything. All I'm going to tell you is a shoot asher, and if you can complete that task, maybe we can do something for it. All I'm just saying is I wanted to come out tonight just to tell you. And I so love every single so candidate. Get, you get, but you get first target call, and then you hand it off to Elo to like finish out the rest of the set, right? Yes, I will. <laughs> okay. do, I will do right. that. Yeah. And what is Damn like Rock you know going to be singing in another system, now, right? waiting for what? a sign of light? Just, the you know you're saying this in public, and that Asher's going to tank the fuck up, and we're going to lose, and Asher's still going to live, right? You know that, right? This is how it works. Well, we're going to shoot because Asher. because I'm, I'm, because you have no discretion. I'm going to basically abuse all of my powers so that we. Go to shoot Asher first. That's all, right, all wait, I'm doing. Here, here's what we're doing. You know what? Okay. Come, come on, come on in a future week. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. tell you right now. You get Elo. You make him FC. Boom. I'm in. Okay. Um, Done. All right. Just saying. All right. But yeah. right now we've got some CSM people that yeah, we need I know, to talk no, to I because I didn't mean to because this time. I just want to do the shot because before right. we get to the Imperium's like you know April April Fools thing or whatever okay yeah. you know, we we've got to get through a CSM election that has a lot of consequence on whether or not people from Galenti space can get to Caldari space absolutely and I just want to tell you I love you but I just needed to get Rocket on my team you know so I'm sorry. Everybody right. wants Rocket on their team. <laughs> that, that, right. Are you going to light a sino in drinking. the tournament or what? Oh my like, god, I don't you understand. Light a sino right now for Rocket no, I didn't want to see him naked. What? Yeah. Shut up. All right, love you guys. I'll talk to you later. All right, see you, Wild. Yeah, everyone likes Coffee Rocks. You, you want Coffee Rocks on your team for sure.
Humphrey Ross is a good looking <laughs> man, and you know what? What he does, what he does with the Wrecking Crew is amazing. <laughs> All right, so we're we're in the second hour. Uh, that five seconds was five minutes, but <laughs> right, okay. So... so what we're gonna do? Each candidate gets one minute to pump out their uh, their platform. All right. So we're gonna start with uh, Vic Jefferson. Ready, set, go. One minute. Um, so I'm talking to you guys as a player of this game. I am not a large NullSec Alliance, LowSec Alliance, or anything, uh, you know, command type person. I play the game you play. Whatever you've done, whatever you've been in fleets, lead small fleets, do industry, do PvE, I've done it. There's almost nothing in this game I have not done. So if you want a player that you can voice concerns through to CCP, I am pretty much, I think, the best candidate. Uh, if you want anything else, go ahead and vote for it. I'm not going to think either way. But if you want a rounded person who's played a lot of this game and can verbalize and uh, write wh how things are, go ahead and toss me a vote. I appreciate it. That's it. Perfect. All right, Arenthor, you're next up. Ready to go. Right, so, so similar to what Vix just said there, um, I'm not one of these big leadership people. I'm one of your standard sort of Aboriginal sec players. Um, I've basically my focus has always been on PVA industry. Um, I've more recently started with the PVP, but I can really bring in forward the ideas on industry adjustments, um, especially stuff to do with uh, the war cost stuff like that, and bring ideas on the table for that. Um, I mean, I've also been in sort of areas of space. Um, I've spent time living in wormholes temporarily as just like a more of a day tripper and temporary living there. Uh, it's also, I've spent a lot of time in low sec just going around doing this sort of PvP stuff as well. Um, so I've got a good understanding of basically all, most of the core mechanics of the game and can definitely expand on that as we go along. Cool. All right. All right. Commander A's, one minute. Go. All right. So as a uh, alliance executor for a, I would consider it a small alliance compared to the other ones out there, uh, I bring kind of that aspect to things. Um, also, having the PvP background is great and, and that, but, I mean, the CSM is already kind of overloaded with FCs and that. I bring kind of that industrial flair. Um, I, my background specifically is moon mining and uh, uh, reactions, as long as several other uh, different groups and items that I do as well. Uh, but... Living in high sec, C2 wormholes, uh, I've done incursions, I've done pretty much everything in game. You know, I don't think anybody who's really serious about running is, has not participated in a lot of it. But I think the one thing that I can bring to this is that I'm very accessible. Uh, a lot of people can catch me on Discord at any time of the day. I'm in pretty much every Discord. All right, Discord shut up, that was one minute. That was one minute, you're done. <laughs> Rodin, oh. one minute, Jeez. go. All right, hey, guys, I'm Rodin. Uh, as go. far as my platform, uh, I'm, I'm a communicator. So what I'm going to be bringing to the table is the ability to seek out answers for the questions that CCP has. Uh, and for the most part, I, I have to be representative of my actual gameplay style, which I kind of play everywhere right now, with the exception of Nasek, of course, at this very moment. But uh, I think there's real value in being able to be that bridge between what CCP wants to put out there and uh, the CSM being used for that purpose. Um, as far as uh, you know, expanding on my platform, I definitely have experience in in writing about Eve, and of course, appearing in these types of uh, podcasts. And uh, I think that's that's really something that can help bring uh, that type of uh, visibility to a group like the CSM to really uh, put out there the concerns of uh, the players. And as far as being able to be representative of a particular space, that's really not me because I don't I can't really relate to myself as. Being, uh, a high sec guy or a low sec guy or whatever, right? Because I I do fly everywhere right these days. Perfect, Suetonia, one minute, go. All right, I'm Suetonia. I mostly take part in PvP in a solo or small gang setting. I'm a guy who undocks every day, so I'm not a bit of a, I'm not some guy who exists to you know post EFT fits on the forum two years after the fact. I fly a lot of alpha clones and low SP and low S ships in PvP. So if you're a new player or you're new to PvP, I know a lot of the challenges that those players face. I make videos on YouTube about, you know, Kestrel, Executioner, Rift, or all these frigates, as well as the more expensive ones too. So I know what challenges people face getting into solo and small gang PvP. I've also been part of the T3D focus group recently. I was a big part of the balance changes that happened to the 
Super and the Confessor and the other two. I've also written a lot about balance problems and suggestions on my blogs, which have been linked into devlogs by CCP Fozzy. So I really know how to communicate to the developers of the game. I think I know how to, uh, uh, you know, list problems, suggest solutions in a constructive manner. Cool. Okay. So this next part, what we're going to do, it's going to be a debate. So what we're going to do, we're going to flip a coin. Whoever wins the coin toss gets to choose whether they want to go first or second or whether they want pro or con. Then we're going to spin the wheel and you're going to get a random question. You're going to get a five minute opening statement, three minute rebuttal. Questions? Nope. No, we're good. All right. First pair is going to be Vic Jefferson versus Arenthor. Vic Jefferson, call it. Uh, sure. I'll go first, sir. That's fine. Heads or tails, bud? Uh, heads. That's fine. That's fine. All right, coin was tails. So, Arenthor, do you want to go first or second or pro or con? Wait, we didn't see you flip the coin. It's a virtual coin, Rigged. Rain. Rigged. Oh, it's so fake. No, oh, virtual coins. God. Random number okay, generator okay, is not the same as gravity. I got really excited for this. Okay, go Are on, sorry. you saying gravity is more fair? Gravity is okay, consistent. Okay, so anyways, Arenthor, you won the coin toss. Do you want to go first I'll or second? second? You want to go second? Okay. Yeah. Vic Jefferson, do you want pro or con? Uh, I'll go four. Okay, I'm spinning the wheel. Alpha clone skills. All right, the question is, alpha clones have a somewhat restrictive list of skills they are able, that they are able to train. Some players have complained that this list is too small, and that alpha clones should be able to, sorry, hold on, do more. Should the list of skills for alphas be expanded, or should the restriction be seen as an incentive to upgrade to Omega? Opening statement, five minutes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, because I have to mostly, <laughs> that the Elf Clone list should be expanded. And there's good reasons for that. And that is a lot of the Tech 2 ships that are in the game actually open up whole new playstyles. And without those ships, you really can't participate in those playstyles and see what those are all about. For example, if you wanted to see what Blops is all about, there's nothing you can actually do in an Elf Clone. You can't use a Cobra Cloak. You can't use any kinds of cloaks. I don't even. I don't. I, you might be able to get into an Astero. I don't know the specifics on that. But in terms of can you actually do this playstyle, the answer is no. Um, you can go ahead and do faction warfare. You can go ahead. And, you can do null sec. You can do that. But you don't actually have enough real sh toys in the box to explore more options. And I think that it is really restrictive and, and keeps a lot of people out of the game. Like, I can do this, I can go earn LP this way, but I can't do incursions, I can't do blops, I can't really do null sec fleet combat because I can't get in these particular ships, I can't get in doctrine ships, I can't train T2 weapons. Um, it just really kind of says you can't access these parts of the game entirely. Is that it? You got another three yep. minutes. Um, there's nothing really much else to be said. I'm not going to waste time. I mean, that, that's really all it is. Cool. Perfect. Arenthor, your opening rebuttal, you have five minutes. Where's Arenthor for, from? I'm sorry, again, if you could say uh, that, because I think somebody was asking out there earlier. I'm, I'm from Newcastle. Newcastle! Yes, so in before Scottish, Irish, or Welsh. Well, it was oh, Scottish I, at one point, I thought right? Dirk until, was asking where he was from in game, but... <laughs> until, until, <laughs> king, until the king took it back, right? I mean... Exactly. Hey. So should I start now? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. You're pro, <laughs> pro alpha clones. Pro alpha clones the way they are. Right, so I think alpha clones are currently in a good place. Um, the current skill set is enough to open up most areas of the game. Uh, especially, I mean, you look at the look at T1 frigates alone. Uh, you've got frigates that you can go into exploration with. You can go into PvP with. You can go into industry with. Um, we're not exactly restricting them from the major areas of gameplay already. It should encourage people to go into a mega status. Uh, this is mainly because servers, um, servers sadly don't run on magic and wishes. Um, so if everyone just decides to go free to play because they can use pretty much any ship in the game, um, it's very good, quickly going to just ruin the game as they'll have no money to run it. Um, it does, as well as... They can do plenty in the game. I mean, there's lots of groups that have already focused on incorporating alpha players into them. Um, I mean, in the Imperium itself, we use um, Fuck You Fleet. So that already gets these guys in these big fleet battles that they can enjoy and that they've clearly seen on the adverts, and that's the reason why they're signing up. Um, they actually work great for us, you know. They work as, like, a force multiplier, so they're not exactly useless players in their own right. 
Cool. Okay, so the whole point of this, this exercise is that for people to see that you guys verbalize your ideas, whether they're your ideas or whether they're actually things that are against what you stand for. So that's why there's a pro and con, and you have to argue the correct side. So the next part is going to be the rebuttal. So Vic Jefferson, I need a rebuttal on uh, what Aaron Thor just said. Three minutes, Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Uh, so I think you've got a lot of good points. I think you do address a lot of things. There are roles that they can take, and it is good that people have gone ahead and said, hey, look, we can fit them into this doctrine this way. We can fit them into this doctrine this way. And that's great. I, I still actually stand a little bit, you know, still maybe a little bit stubborn that there are still play styles that are inaccessible. Like, uh, for example, like Spectre Fleet or Bomber's Bar or stuff like that, that is a whole different play style. And there are currently no ships that Alphas can use to go ahead and participate in those kinds of fleets. Maybe someone just, you know, they don't want to roam around. Maybe someone just wants to be sneaky. Maybe somebody wants to, uh, you know, use ambush tactics the way they want. So if they need to fly a ship, there needs to be a ship that they can actually blops with. And there needs to be a ship that's that they can actually do, like, the, the earliest incursion sites with and just have these outlets be available. Um, I'm aware that people are really trying and really, you know, doing their best and all, like, on Reddit or on, on the forums or wherever people post up to get alphas up to speed as far as you should be in this fit and then they can go and learn all they need to, which is great. But I still think, yeah, there are, at least in terms of some PvE roles they can't do and... A lot of stuff they can't do, so that actually is something they need to go ahead and fix. Perfect. Uh, I ran Thor, your rebuttal of that. Three minutes. Right, my rebuttal to this. Um, yes, you do make a good point that there is certain things, such as if they want to play with Bomber's Ball, that is a style of gameplay that is close to them at the moment. Um, but again, there's no reason why they can't get into that playstyle if they upgrade to a Mega Status. Um, it's not exactly like they can pre-train the skills as an alpha as well. They can get the skills to a certain level uh, before it starts. Uh, they can't get all the way there, that's fair enough. But it does give them a focus in the game so they can try different things and then they can realise, okay, now I want to look at that area of gameplay. The big problem is if we start opening up areas of gameplay such as that, okay, so we start giving them, T2, um, we start giving them stealth bombers, so now we're opening up T2 frigates to them. Where do we stop from them? Do we start opening up to T3 cruisers, the various other things? Do we just keep opening up these different chains, just saying, oh, well, now they can do this style of gameplay, they can do that style of gameplay, and at the end of the day, there's no reason to have an Omega over an Alpha. Beauty. All right. Um, anything from the peanut gallery on that? Dirk? No. Nope. What? <laughs> Why are you like peanut gallery Dirk? Please, bro. I don't hear because I see you have to vent every now and then. So do you want to no, say want, something now? No. Let the I know. freaking educated motherfuckers like chime in on this. Don't, you know, don't call for Dirk now. So I know both <laughs> skeptic nerd guy asked and Satoni asked and or Satoni answered in chat. But alphas cannot already fly pirate ships because they can only use one racial, and pirate ships take two racials. Yeah, Boom. exactly, exactly. You don't get the fucking benefit of that because you're a goddamn alpha. Sorry. Dirk, oh, right. a Dirk, class. Dirk, you're not running for CSM. You're not allowed right. to get about this. Sorry. The next Sorry. pair is Commander running on, I'm running on second class citizen And platform. a rodent. So, Commander yes. A's, call the coin in the air. Ready? Go. Heads. It's tails. Fucking rigged! So, Dude, it's rodent, fucking rigged. Prove it! Prove it! Prove it! Prove it! Prove it! I can't prove it! You could actually. Who's hosting tonight? Is it Drake? Oh, or... uh, I'm hosting. <laughs> Well, then you could be doing this and showing people the toss. Yeah, come on. No, he Jesus, just, he likes I don't have a coin. For... You know what I would do? I would actually flip a real coin. Oh, Maybe you should shit. do that. You old Roden, do you want to go Dude, first? I have a Grand Turk three, ca three crown okay, let me coin the wheel. over there. Yes, Commander A's, do you want pro or con? I'll take pro. Okay, okay yeah. this is not a pro or con question, but it's a, it's a good question. Are, are, are you ready? Do you want yeah. pro or con? You don't get it. Sorry, go ahead. All right, sh shut, shut up. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? What go. the fuck? They have five minutes to answer this? <laughs> five minutes opening statement. Wait, wait, wait. Why? What? Well, one time-sized kestrels? He doesn't have uh, to use the whole five minutes. No, no, we're not well, doing ducks. It's one titan-sized kestrel 
or a hundred kestrel sized No, like, it's Rain, I, it's I would you like penis sized nipples or a nipple sized penis? That's what you... the question should be. What? Penis sized nipples or a nipple sized penis? What would you what? rather have? What? What the fuck? No. That's the real <laughs> question that everyone wants to know. Not ducks and no, shit. I, like, I think mine's related should I spin to the eating. wheel again. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that was the worst the question ever. For the record, I'd kill the bigger one because probably it's more expensive and it'll drop faction or dead space loot or something. That's a good point. So a giant okay, Rorquil horse. Rorquil balancing. Hold on. Let me pull a question up. Okay, the recent buff to the Rorquil has brought forth some interesting use of the capital mining ship. Most notably, it can be used as a sort of invulnerable jump picker with reduced jump fatigue. Should the Rorquil be nerfed and how? Go. Uh, yeah, I think it needs a nerf. Um, I think the best Hold on, way is to Rogan do... going first? Oh, is he? Yep. I don't know. All right, I'm okay. on con. All right. At this time, I believe that the uh, roll call does need a nerf from a game balancing perspective. It's just really out of whack. If you look at the ship as far as its abilities and the classification that it has, uh, it's basically supposed to be an industrial ship. But an industrial sh even at the level of an industrial ship, it far outperforms uh, the different ships uh, in similar classes. Uh, right now, if you're looking at nullsec entities, uh, not including really, really large blocks, uh, the use of the roar calls have actually um, disincentivized uh, uh, barge mining. You know, uh, so right now, uh, although with all those stuff that's that's happening, you know, uh, should it be nerfed? Uh, you know, taking the side of Khan, it, it shouldn't be nerfed too hard. Uh, if I think uh, we're really at a point where, considering that ship and uh, the space that it inhabits, any kind of really heavy-handed uh, balancing towards it will will be too much. So we have to look at specifically what side who we, we need to nerf. Uh, right now, I think it's okay to for it's okay to have that industrial side to it. But somehow, with the the, the mechanics of far as far as it being a, a combat ready ship has to be has to be negated, um, because it, it is a, an all in one ship right now. Um, it just needs to be done in in a way that you know using metrics and uh, actual use and destruction and kill board information that we would have to be able to balance that to a point where it makes more sense than what it cur than what it currently is now. Commander A's, why shouldn't the Rook will be nerfed? Go. Simply put, supers and and capitals are dying because of it, and I think that's fantastic. And I think that uh, you know, it any time you can gain the content that you gain from killing capitals and supers, that's a that's a positive change to the game. Um, on top of that, when they do die, they're worth a lot of money. So you know, for for groups that that feed off those fights that happen, you know, even even the third party groups, it's great to see it happen because it's like, hey, let's quick fleet up, let's get out there, let's kill some capitals. That's a that's an energizing way to get people involved in the game. Beauty. All right, rebuttal. Roden, go. So even though you are going to get all those kills uh, using the roar calls as uh, your platform for that destruction, uh, you really have to take a look at. Um, the actual intent of that ship. So now that we have uh, taken this tool that CCP has given us and basically warped it around to do something else, now has it really lost the initial point of the whole ship being an industrial platform? If we have lost that, then it's it, like it, it just doesn't make sense. You know, the, then then that means that the very nature of the ship really is off kilter. So from a, from a purely balancing standpoint, it really has no home. Is it industrial? Is it combat? Uh, what the hell are we going to do with this? And from this, not only does it actually uh, bad design, that may lead CCP to actually use that design concept to produce even more fucked up ships down the line, which we really don't want to do, especially at the capital level. Commander A's, your rebuttal to his rebuttal. Go. That's a solid point. One of the things that, I, that I'm running on is the fact that I, I enjoy spirited debate around things. And, and, you know, I recognize when somebody comes up with a point that I, you know, can't really beat, you know, so I'm, I'm 
going to go with him. He's got a solid point. Full point. All right. All right. So I, I do like whole... that because there, there are times, like, uh, I mean, when you take, like, speech classes or anything like that where, like, you go to the debate stuff and it's like you're forced to debate a certain side and there's just times where you're like, I just can't, I can't go against the the thing I'm supposed to support because, or wait, no, I said that wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's... You know what I meant, though, but... <laughs> But that's a really good uh, that's a really good topic though because I think we're actually are I think game wide I feel like we're still pretty split on the roll call even though we all know how fucked up broken it is <laughs> I think it's it's it, I don't think it's quite a landslide as we think it is at, at least from the people that I talk to. It's right, uh, next pair. Oh, what's oh, up? No, I was just gonna say and, and like it, it's not just CCP that does this. There's a lot of gaming things that do this that when something in their game goes to the wayside because it's just not really feasible to do like it's just it's not beneficial or the benefits of it are just not good enough that no one ever uses it so they're like well we need to buff this and then instead of just you know trying to balance it to a point where it's like this is decent now they go way overboard and make it so good that it's like you have to use this if you want to be viable in whatever it does Otherwise, it's like, and it just completely dwarfs everything around it. Like that, so many yeah. games do that, and I don't understand why they don't put a little bit more like testing and and uh, balancing well, into it. Well, you can't though. Not 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 in an environment like like Eve, because being a single shard and scaling, you can, you just it's so easy to fuck up scaling. Like just because it's good solo doesn't mean it's gonna be good in a fleet and vice versa. And that's really I guess. where things start breaking, you know. Well, yeah, I the, guess that, that's where they, they just game. don't go into the testing as far as like you know. Like they figure, like okay, if you run this in a mining thing, it works great. But if you take a giant, you know, a, a group of like a couple dozen of these things and go assault something with it, they didn't probably didn't realize how broken it was going to be. Yeah, I mean, right. I'm, I'm just I, I just need to interject, interject in here. I'm sorry, uh, Dorian. Dorian's calling for a shot. He says oh, he yeah. is in fact j drinking Gentleman Jack, so he's not just somebody who's calling for a shot. Look. If all of you out there were drinking right now, we wouldn't have to ask this question, but we know that the fact is that some of you are not, and sometimes you just want to see us drink more. So, um, you know, whatever. Dorian called it. He's actually having a drink. He just texted it to me on my phone, and uh, yeah. How do you, how do you know actually, he didn't. I just totally fucking lied. Yeah, how do you that, know he's not a girl drinking water? He could totally be freaking like, you know, a girl drinking water, whatever. I'm just trying to like create a narrative here and break shit up for a little bit. <laughs> trying to give people time uh, to, to think us. about like so, how they think that Rorquals are going to like rule the world. Well, uh, yeah, we'll do a shot now. There's someone, uh, uh, Cyclohexanol, um, it, it asked me, now this could be, you could decide, I'll, let, I'll leave it up to, to LB, um, but he, he gave a, a possible topic for the next discussion was uh, war decking. He said, like, he spent specifically, how would you fix war decking, but you could just put it on a general, like, war decking topic. So, war decking is on the wheel, the wheel of magic. Mm. Oh, wait, if chat asks good Please questions, can we ask Please those? This. Maybe. Let's use that. And then there's another guy named Arcage. I don't know what his, like, his Twitch name is, but I call him Pikachu. Um, but he's like, hey, can I ask a good question? I said, go for it. Maybe we'll use it. What is it? I'm looking forward to the chat. I see the Akinami he hasn't asked it yet. Yeah, he hasn't asked it yet. Okay. Are we all just holding up things to the camera? Yeah. I, I put the skirt back on my uh, uh, on my shot glass from last week. Oh, good man. My Tito skirt on so my fancy. shot glass. Okay. And I, don't, I don't know of any other like uh, liquor bottle that has that shit. <laughs> it really does. Right, you know why? So it the next pair. Sorry, the next pair is Suetonia, and Vic Jefferson's gonna get to go again because there's an odd number. Wow. So. I'm going to ask Suetonia to have call this coin in the air. Go ahead, bud. I'll go Tails. Tails. Look at that. All right. Do you want to go first or second? Never or do you fails. Want, uh, Dude, it's always out? Tails. you got to check your program. Tails man. never fails. Maybe I'm not doing it right. I'll just I'll prove it again. Are you just, are you like clicking? It's still Tails. Canadian click, rigged. Dude, <laughs> you're fucking thinking. Look at you, really get. Or something? What are you doing over there? Dude, know, it's fuck, fucking. Man, it's always tails. Are you There's sure you didn't wrong. get like one of those like uh, like joke <laughs> programs that's computer. supposed to rig it to like 100% one side? I don't know. Maybe the internet's wrong. I thought you were pretty straight Canadian up the internet, but apparently yeah. you're kind of a douche canoe. Whatever. It's not TNT it's a, rolls, people. Just so you know, it's better. A it's a fake democracy, anyways. Hey, wait that coin. No, we're disavowing any knowledge of LB. Wait, no. I need to give back my stuff first. Hold on. Okay, anyway, Suetonia, do you want to go first or second? I'll, I'll go first. Okay. Spinning the wheel of questions. 
By the way, Dorian did post a pic like a picture of him drinking je uh what's it called Gentleman Jack. Where's Akagagi's question? Akagagi Dorian's was always been legit. About... <laughs> He's asking about Rorqual PvP? Yeah, just he just talked about that. I know, poor guy came in late. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna go with the wheel then. Burn Jita. So the question on Burn Jita, is it griefing or is it economic warfare? No, no. man, Burn Burn Jita's cool, it's part of wait. the sandbox. Wait, 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 check, check. Why don't we talk about the war deck thing? All right, we'll talk about the war deck thing. What's my question on war decks? Okay, so I How think war decks the are... There you go, go. Okay. okay, I think war decks are fundamentally broken from an offensive perspective right now. I think there's no reason for the defenders to form up for everything at all. So every war deck looks like this, right? It's either a one-man show. So what I do is I get an all, I declare war on Goon Swarm, and then I just use a neutral character whenever I see like a random noob in Karma Fleet, I gank the hauler, then I dock up, and there's nothing that Goonstorm can do about it, and there's no way for them to force me to fight. I just stay docked up in the station all day. And then on the other side of that, you just have uh, like uh, trade hub campers like Marmite Collective, who just deck like 80 alliances. Like I think they actually have like triple digit wars right now. And there's, there's not like strategic depth in like, you know, declaring war on people. So what I think CCP should do is they should introduce a new uh, service module for structures where you have to have this installed to declare war on another alliance. So if I wanted to declare war on Goon Swarm, I need to have a citadel with a war structure built into it. And the fuel cost would be based on the size of the alliance or something. Maybe you could still use the Concord War fee. So what that does is it gives... And if the, uh, if the citadel is put into the armor reinforcement... So the second reinforcement, but not killing it. So that that would be like the week after the war. Uh, basically, it would force a surrender. So Goon, I wouldn't be able to. It would retract the war, and then I wouldn't be able to de declare war on Goonstorm for uh, two months. I mean, sorry, two weeks. And that way, uh, there's a reason for Goonstorm to hire mercenaries to kill my citadel to get them out of the war deck. So that put, that creates more content. It also means if I just stock up and be a pussy about the, like you're declaring war in an alliance, it should be like an actual war. And they can show up, they can kill it themselves, you know, to force me to fight. And they're also, like, like if you look at the Eve Skunk list for all these high sec alliances, like Marmite, uh, Vendetta, etc., they're all blue to each other. It's a huge blue donut. And they just scam the same clients over, like, you know, if someone pays protection, the other guys war deck them to get protection. You know, it's just a big, you know, racketeering. And so, you know, uh, and also, that also, you know, if you declare war on a hundred Nolsec alliances, eventually that citadel is going to get destroyed, and then you can't deck those alliances for two weeks. But it, since it's the early armor timer as well, the the, the other guys have to uh, de offensively declare war on you to kill your citadel to remove it completely. So I think it'll be very balanced. And also, like if, if I declare war on Goon Swarm, some guys show up and kill my, and reinforce my citadel. Well, I can just declare war on Fcon, for example. So it doesn't really lock me out of my gameplay. It just stops who I can deck for two weeks. And, you know, if I piss off people enough, maybe they'll hire someone else to declare on me then to kill my Citadel. I think that would be a cool mechanic to get people to fight, get strategic objectives back in high sec, so there's more reason for other war deck alliances to fight each other, reasons for high sec uh, mercenary alliances to f actually exist, other than for POS bashes and Citadel bashes, which exist now. Uh, can we ask questions, or is this just a tight... No, no. You know what? Okay. This right. has never been a, associated with questions. This is only about people responding to one another that are in the match. We've done this Dick before? Jefferson. Rebuttal. No, actually, we've never done this before. So if you want to like throw <laughs> um, in a fucking question so because you, like, you called in a question gonna, something serious. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. But, um, so everything that's fun in this game happens because there's some kind of ante on the table. It doesn't matter what the ante is. Sometimes it's a pause. Sometimes it's a worthless moon. Sometimes it, it can even be just, just honor on the table. Something is on the table that two people are fighting about. And the funnest thing about Eve is that one of those two two entities will have friends, and then the other entity will have friends. And eventually, you can have something like Asakai happen over garbage, because everyone's got friends, and there's even just a tiny bit of ante on the table. And war deckers have no ante on the table ever, which is why it's fundamentally wrong in Eve. So I'm agreeing with Satonia. There's nothing I can do to defend war deckers. The mechanic is total bullshit. Boo! No, the, I'm sorry. No. I will never. I will never. The question war deck is, how would you fix war decks? So technically, how would you fix war decks? I I agree with Satonia that, uh, okay, 
you, there needs to be anti on the table, like like I just said. There needs to be something they can lose, and there isn't now. It doesn't. That's the whole thing. You, can, you people will lose horrible a horrible amount of isk and a horrible amount of everything over the tiniest little little thing. But as war actors have their 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 you know. They they camp the hubs. They just sit there. You have nothing on the table. If you form up to go fight them, they're gonna dock up. So there's never anything actually on the table. Every Eve mechanic needs to have something that's at risk, so both sides can actually play with it. Right now, there's nothing in there that lets them do that. I think that the structure idea is great, but it could be anything else. It could just be if you're you know, it, you have to have a structure, a citadel uh, module. A something that makes you actually have to sit out in space. Now, I don't want to turn High Sec into another faction warfare style bullshit, which kind of what Sov is right now. But at the same time, there needs to be something that spawns either that they need to put up or that something that spawns which war deckers are accountable for and must defend. It, the timer doesn't need to be big, it doesn't need to be great. Something, either that they build or that spawns up someplace in the system that they have to commit to. Otherwise, there's no anti on the table and it's not an Eve mechanic. It's a bullshit mechanic. Uh, someone from the crowd wants to know what Suetonia knows about high sec marking. Oh, I, I was in a War Deck Alliance from between 2007 and 2009, so I kind of know a bit about it. I I haven't really played in high sec and PvP for a long time. I've just like you know made Care Bear PvPers look up to me basically in high sec. That's about it. How would these new board deck mechanics fix people who just sit there and camp Jita with like twenty alts and Lodgy? Well, well, that's the structure mechanic, right? Like they get the structure to help even the odds too, and it's in their time zone as well. That's why I really like the Citadel mechanic. So like if if I just if I'm just a pussy and I'm sitting on the jitter undock, that structure is not on the jitter undock. So you know if they if they want to sit twenty dudes on the jitter undock, well, I'm gonna bring twenty dudes and I'm gonna shoot the structure. If they don't fight me, then they then they lose the war deck and maybe I can deck them in return and then kill their their structure. You know like it ups the ante. It, I think it allows more people to bring in more friends with the ally mechanic, which is currently horribly broken. Like, whenever Marmite declares war on someone, you'll notice that the same, that like garbage corporations will all uh, offer their, like, uh, you as an ally, and they're all Marmite alts, so they're all, uh, uh, you know, like, the Vendetta alts. You know, it's, it's just one big racketeering. There's no anti, like, as uh, Vic Jefferson says, there's no anti on the table. There needs to be some mechanic that forces them to come off a Stargate or an Undock where they stand to lose something if they don't show up to fight. It's meant to be a war. You're declaring war on an alliance. It's kind of, you know, it's completely unlike a war. It's because it's not supposed to be. It's, it's resource control. It's not really about combat. But the resources are the players. That's the whole thing. I, the only thing people are really fighting, the most you can do is make is deny them kills on the Jitta Undock for a, for a set amount of time. You can't actually make them... Th there's no real resources. Like, uh, to be fair, if I may take the mic for just, just a couple seconds here, like... So here's how I originally, here's how I think Wordex should be in high sec in terms of, okay, say there's a high sec mining corp. You can have whatever feelings you want about that, but say there is one and there's an ice belt and they like to mine it. One day another corp comes along and starts to mine that ice belt. If they wanted to Wardek, if, if that Wardek started between those and things got escalated, that'd be great. Eve would have happened right then. But as it is, that never happens. The only people that use Wardex are the Wardecking alliances, which have they don't care about resource control. They just want that undock or that pipe to camp so they get free frags at no risk. Which is, to be fair, I think that the, the Citadel idea has some merit to it, but Citadels themselves have problems. And I'm kind of, you know, that's probably another question. Citadels are too easy to defend in the in, at all, especially in high sec. I think that some other kind of structure would be that's more vulnerable. It doesn't give all the advantages. Would make it a lot more easy. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate your responses, but to be honest, there's different types and facets of players that actually use the war deck mechanic. Uh, just you the... could have fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, from I me mean, looking at just you know the guys who you know just camp uh, the hubs. Uh, I mean, it becomes a numbers game at that point, doesn't it? You know, it becomes, uh, are, are you able to financially sustain all these war decks while still being able to loot enough to cover your losses? Yes, so, well, I might have triple digit wars. Oh, no, absolutely, absolutely, they, and, and they can. I mean, so right now, is it, if that particular setup 
is quite difficult to attain. I mean, I know they we kind of use them as an example for like how broken the war deck mechanic is. Uh, but there's such an anomaly, though. I mean, is 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 there a lot of is, is are there kind of ancillary mechanics that have led to that, and should we be looking at at, at those ancillary mechanics, not necessarily the result of it? Well, the the root of the problem is there's no anti on the table because again, in Eve, when someone gets attacked for whatever reason, they're going to find friends. Then the attackers are going to find friends, and then you can actually have Eve happen. Eve is is a is a personal thing with politics and friends and allies and everybody getting together. That's the problem because there isn't any any anti like that. If there is anti, then these then these war deck corporations would actually have a real game to play. They'd have to say, can I war deck this guy and be safe? Kind of like you do in Losec. Can I attack this guy's paws and not get horribly wrecked? Can I attack this guy's face and not get horribly wrecked? Can I antosis this and not get wrecked? It's more of a game to play if they have to actually judge. Can I attack this guy and get away with it? Does this guy actually have powerful Losec friends? Wouldn't it be hilarious if they actually did and they all came to high sec and all fought the war? They could. So the thing is, they, they don't, the though. That's the first end. Because they, they don't right now. Because there's no. We need to table. find a way of bringing null sec war to high sec. That's exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, no, I'm no. just, I'm just saying, like when it comes to war decks, like I would always. Then we would literally be ISIS. When you war deck a null sec <laughs> alliance, all you are doing is you are trying to set up That's a free traders. gank opportunity for their supply lines. That that's basically yeah. all it is. Because I mean, no, the null sec guys don't no, really go into high sec though. very often. Not even that though. Their supply lines are all neutral alts. Yeah, yeah, they they, they are, but so you get the it's, random. It's just, preying, it's just preying on the on basically the ignorant new player that joins the big null sec alliance and doesn't necessarily understand the null, the uh, or, war mechanics and to just die on the under. or the really bad drunk player like myself. I <laughs> um hey now I hey it was your fault. You had me go get you that stuff. <laughs> I lost a carrier that night too. You know. Yeah, I lost a jump freighter that night. <laughs> Yeah, and, both you you, and both of you I was I fucking talk thinking about, about when I walked over there to get a fucking beer, okay, because I can hear it through my goddamn headphones. Those are the people who fucking die, okay? Right, right. The people like guy, me. The dumb guy who's fucking, I'm sorry, the drunk guy who's freaking <laughs> drunk, okay? And, and uh, well, the guy who, like, threw his, like, fanny out there because, like, for no, like, legitimately good reason other than it makes fire good fire TV. Mechanics. I've lost a jump writer. I'm not a TV. dumb guy. Well, yeah, I lost a jump writer because I... If you lost a dumb I thought I was on my neutral alt, but I was on my... I did, I lost a dump writer. I was on my TNT character, not my neutral alt, and I I thought I was on my alt, and so I was flying around, and I went... And instead of jumping off the Gita gate, I was like, oh, it's only four jumps, and it's all through high I'll just fly there, and so I... Went to New Caldari, and then next thing I know, I'm getting locked up and shot, and Concord is nowhere in sight, Derek, and I'm you've panicking. Never done but something stupid like that ever. But I, uh, I, have to, I have to be completely honest. Look, I got killed the night before I joined PL by <laughs> PL. Okay, and that was because I'm like, I'm, awesome. like yeah, you know what? I'm Dirk fucking McGurk. I'll be able to war warp out of Surrender, and, and nobody McGurk. will, and nobody will fucking shoot me. And you know what? Yeah, whoever the hell it was, freaking, you know, Doom or whoever, you know, shot the shit out of me sitting in, you know, you know, in Surrender because they were camping it. I thought I could insta warp off it, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I have never lost my shit to something that freaking simple minded. I got a, I got a secret for people. I, I lost mine to another war deck. Sorry, sorry about it, real quick. I, I thought yeah. I was in an interceptor carrying a bunch of like. Uh... Yes, yes, he's in his goddamn office cube. That's how committed he is yeah, to yeah. this goddamn game. Y'all right. need to like, y'all need to get as committed as that guy, okay? <laughs> that guy right there, okay? That, what people actually think is that you're at work, matter all. That's actually your house. You built a home. cubicle in yeah, your house. It's a modern house. See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that you built a cubicle Everybody in your house to play the game with. You can play from it's work to... and your boss lets you. That's yeah. fucking America. There's hardly no offices here. This is That's all modern. That's why we have no productivity in this country anymore. But, but no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, it's it's not just new players that lose. Because, like, there are a lot of new players that died at Wardex because they don't know any better. But it's like when you look at the deaths to people like uh, Maramite and other stuff, when you look at, like, uh, Goons and all those other alliances... There's actually a significant number of kills that come through constantly on those, and a lot of them are not brand new players. So it's like people are dying to the war decks. And I don't know if it's because they they probably just think, like, ah, they're not always on the gate. I'll probably be all right. And then they try to go they through. It's, it's people just throwing the dice. Let me just tell you this interesting thing that happened. So I got trapped. I was in the wrong character who was war decked, an NC character, and I was carrying about $10 billion in a jump freighter. It was all mine, so it would have been fine, but it looks bad on your killboard, right? So you get in trouble for that sort of thing. And 
I walked away because I was mad. I was going to die anyway. I come back, and the guy's ransomed me. You know, I come back, really, 15 minutes later, and I'm still not dead. He's got me down to a sliver of hull, and he's like, get out. Let me have it. Get out. Let me have it. Never and, give it uh, I said, okay, I'll get out because <laughs> I know when you get out, your skills don't apply to the ship, and it explodes, <laughs> and there's no kill mail. So I got out. Oh, you're worried about kill mails. I wasn't worried about a kill mail. I, the funny thing is, like, I, I took a jump stuff. freighter to move something that I thought was a few thousand M3, and it turned out being 40 M3, and I'm like, well, fuck it. It's already in the cargo hold. I'll just take this anyway. Wait, hold on. Did you die that night with like 40 M3 in your <laughs> yeah, jump freighter? I did. And That's I still repainted your jump freighter? Yeah, no, you no, did. No, it had to be bigger than that because I asked you It was like 40 M3, stuff. and the funny thing is I had, like, a, an impel – or not an impel. What's the – a bestow? I had a bestower I could have taken, but I was like, oh, fuck it. I'll take my arc because, hey – if you're gonna fly through high sec, you gotta fly in style. I'm taking my Corvette. I'm not taking my fucking Prius. Exactly. I'm rolling <laughs> my caddy, baby. All right, all right. Look, we've got literally 14 minutes left in the uh, regulation hours of this show, and 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 I'm sorry. I you know I know that you may have some freaking like head-to-head -head scenarios and whatnot. I do want to ask this question. I want to ask this question of each one of these people that are that are running for for CSM. Why exactly? do you think that you are qualified to be a CSM member? And we're going to start off, and look, I am going to start this, but uh, LB, who's not there anymore, I need somebody who, I need, Matterall, can you help me out here? I just want to make sure we stay in sure. freaking order, because I won't be able to do it, okay? Um, um, Why don't you ask Rain? She's an accountant. What do you want? Well, do you want a it's minute? not me, it's not Drayden, it's not Drunk, it's not LB, it's not okay. Matterall, it's not Rain, it's not Skeptic. Vic Jefferson, you get to go first. Okay. Tell me. You, you have tell, a minute. <laughs> tell all of us. You know what? I don't give a shit. Uh, we've got 13 minutes left. Take a minute and a half, two minutes. It's a minute. Why do you get, why, why should you be considered to be a CSM candidate? What is it that, like, you know, we should all be saying, you know what? That's our fucking guy. Um, I think I went through it mostly before. Um, if you're. I've played a lot of aspects of this game. There's an almost infinite number of aspects, so you can't play them all. However, I believe I am a reasonable uh, reasonable person who can listen to anyone, who will listen to anyone, who actually does play the game as a player. Um, I want to see Eve get better and better. It's been a great game. I haven't even signed up for any of the games since I started playing Eve. <laughs> uh, I can communicate. I can write. I like posting, at least on the Evo forums, where things are, are fine. I will, if if elected, and people want to blog or something, I do that. Um, I have no problems communicating where I stand on things. Um, and I think I know a lot about the game. I might not, but you're free to believe whatever you want. <laughs> are you a member of Roe Capel? Is that is that the road that I'm seeing here? I am a member of Roe Capel. Yes. <laughs> how long How long have you been a member of Roe Capel? Uh, a little over a year. Do they like a little, you? A little over a year. Ha, has Roe Capel done any of its magic in the last year that you have been a part of, like, kind of generating, or...? Yeah, like, to, to, for, to a large extent, Roe is still a good small small gang PvP entity. I mean, there's a lot of rough edges, and there's a lot of rough history behind it, but at the same time, I, I, I haven't found a better place to do small gang in, so... And for those people who are listening out there, Roe Capel is a literal fucking legend in this game for making shit happen. Now, I'm not going to say it's where it was in its glory fucking days, but if you're somebody who thinks that, uh, I don't know, you know, maybe some people who know something about, like, blowing shit up is a thing, maybe it's somebody you need to consider, and maybe it's somebody that you need to look into more deeply than what they can bring to this show. Next up, Aaron Thor. <laughs> nice. Silence. <laughs> Yeah, silence. Right, Fucking silence. tell us, bro. Tell us. Nice tell us delivery. why yeah. you're sorry. Yeah, I still need to be considered. <laughs> right. So why do I be doing CSM? Um, you know what? It's sort of hold on to the question and answer. Um, I mean, some of you, some of you guys may have met me. I know this is like four AM in the UK. Um, and obviously like Europe. Um, I mean, those of you that I have met and have spoke to before, whether it's on comms, whether it's at Eve meets that I attend, um, you'll know that. I often spend a lot of time discussing uh, various game mechanics with people. Uh, is that feel whether the current implementation of what people are doing with them, what people have plans to do with them, uh, as well as Phoebe crafting what we could change, how would that how would that affect gameplay in various areas, and it's something I quite enjoy doing as well. So I always spend time to talk to people about game mechanics, especially areas where I 
get into, which was a lot of like industrial industrial PVE exploration. Uh, definitely always up for the talk about that. Um, I mean, I have plenty of experience. I have the experience of, again, your average sort of guy that lives in Nullsec. Um, so I'm first hand. I'm not sitting here um, just sort of skimming ISK off a corporation anywhere or an alliance. Uh, I have to actually get out there and earn it the hard way. It's, you know, I, I can't really think of anything else to say, really. Your time's up. Well, oh, that's even better. His, his time actually wasn't up. I mean, let's be honest here. It but, was. It was over a minute, Dirk. No, it wasn't. It may it's have been over a minute. A timer. This is all like, you know, give and take. If he was saying something important, he would have been like, oh, shit, a minute lasts two minutes in our space. This is this is open comms time. But. Uh, <laughs> it's like tie-dye. But, but, hold on. He gave up at the end, so therefore, okay, Commander A's. Commander A's, tell us why we should make Eve great again. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Why you should be a CSM <laughs> member. All right. Uh, so first and foremost, it's it's more so about coalition building. Uh, last year, I actually managed to get on the Imperium ticket as a relatively unknown high sec candidate um, that was pushing for war deck changes. Um, the reason I was able to do that was because I went at it. I talked with Arth. I talked with Matani, and went to them and said, "I don't care about the politics behind things." I could I could care less about that. I, I care about the ideas and what's going to make the game better, and and that's what enabled me to be on that ticket. Um, and I'm hoping that's what enables me to be on that ticket again. Uh, but the other aspect of it is being willing to change my opinion based on the information that that comes out or the information that comes out in a conversation. You know, if I'm wrong on something, I'm willing to admit, hey, I'm I'm wrong. You know. That's that. Uh, the other part of this is, as some of you guys have seen through the politics channel and on a couple of the Discord channels, I'm available almost all day, every day. Uh, Discord, Tweet Fleet, uh, Twitter, you name it, I'm, I'm there. This year specifically, I think what I have to contribute is going to be around industry, moon mining, reactions, all areas that I've been heavily involved in and that I have uh, ideas surrounding. Now, when I get on, am I going to lobby for war decks? Hell yes. That, I think that that's a mechanic that is wildly broken and that it needs fixing, but they're not going to listen unless I can get the rest of the CSM to get behind that idea and say, hey, as a group, we think that you really need to fix this because we're losing people because of it. And I think if, if it's brought up as a group with the correct support, you're going to get that. And that's that's what you need from a CSM. At least that's what I think you need from a CSM. You need somebody who's willing to to get the idea out there and push for the right things. A's for CSM. All right. <laughs> nice. yeah. There you go. See, he nice. ended his shit. He had a <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a nice he's plug. Like, he's like, you know what? Yeah. Oh, man. Roden. Roden, you make it fucking hard on me, bro. Tell us <laughs> why. Tell us why. Tell us people why. You know, you know, tell everybody out there why. Why you? Think, why uh, some guy that knows something about, like, you know, I don't know, economics and shit? Oh, that's true. That's a good point. It's a tough sell. All right, guys. Hey, I'm Rodin. Uh, you will find value in me as a CSM candidate, not based on my history or who I've flown with or who even I'm flying with now or my, any side uh, operations I have. You're going to find value in me as a CSM candidate because I can be that instrument that you can reliably use to actually communicate intelligently to CCP. Uh, basically, what I've been doing is just that, you know, uh, although I am limited to just the channels that I have access to, I, I very uh, routinely just bounce, people will give me ideas and I, I, I cross check them and I, I have to like, and I bounce those ideas to another group to see if it's actually valid. I think. Uh, a CSM candidate that is not biased by space uh, or even to a certain extent even activity has value because that actually opens up a better platform for people to feel invested in the actual CSM program. Right now, I think it's very, I can confidently say, you know, having lived a, a good portion of my time in game in high sec, 
most people kind of have given up on the idea because they know that their voice will not be heard because no sec guy A, B, C, and D are in CSM and they just didn't give a fuck about high sec. So I want to change that. Uh, and, I, and I can effectively do that by really breaking away those barriers of space and where we live and, and using those kind of, although really good platforms to get, get, uh, get identified, it doesn't really help when the point of the whole program is to actually gather feedback from a larger group of players, not just low sec people versus high sec people versus low sec people versus wormhole people. So if you're looking a guy looking for a guy that actually wants to that can receive a large amount of feedback and then filter it down and then kind of produce it intelligently for for consumption by CCP, I can be that guy. The end. Oh, nice. At least you told us the fucking end. You know what? And I'm so glad fucking Sutoni didn't come here tonight because that guy can freaking talk. So, uh, you know, it's great to have heard from all of the other CSM candidates. Wait, yeah, hold on. For me, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Except, that, except that Sutoni actually did come tonight. And if you don't answer why you should be a fucking CSM candidate at the beginning of your, like, statement with... Uh, I don't know, with one of your, uh, you know, with one of your puns or pick up sexual lines. come-ons or pickup lines or, you yeah. Come-ons. <laughs> oh, you have to wait for me to be on CSM for those. But like, oh, they should no. run for me because I have the that's, best pickup lines. That's going to be the worst I part. That's going to be the worst part is that if you make it on the CSM. Dirk, he's talking. You ask him a question, he's talking. Go on. I'm sorry, yeah, go. Uh, I have go, the best teams too, but in all seriousness, uh, I've uh, had a lot of success communicating with CCP about links, about tactical destroyers. I was on the focus group for the tactical destroyers. I think like my input made a lot of positive change there. I got a shout out from CCP Fozzy in the dev in the post on the forums about stuff I written on my blog about the T3Ds. I've also uh, I think done a, a few balance changes to frigates, and CCP Fozzy has also given me like you know shout out cred for that when I made videos and blogs about them. And you know I'm just I think I'm just really good at communicating. What is wrong with a ship or a mechanic, or, you know, whatever it is, uh, you know, putting forth solutions in a fair and balanced way and, you know, get just getting thing, get, getting a lot of positive feedback uh, uh, for the uh, thing in question. Anyway, I, I think we're done now. Well, you could use the pickup line. I know you'll vote for me because I'm already in your box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a pretty good one. It works. Yeah, Drayden, if you can't help me with the selection, you can ha you I can help you with your erection, so just keep that in oh, mind. Oh, oh shit! I do need help with that actually. Everybody needs help. Christ. BC's rolling over in his grave right now because we've never had one of these things where we like, you know, had had CSM candidates on. And other than to like, you know, just be part of a conversation. You know, if you ever break your arms on a uh, skiing trip, I've got you, buddy. All right. Uh, yeah. We got. Oh yeah. Okay. Shot. So we're pretty much at the end of the shot. show. Fuck it. Uh, we got one minute. Hold Hold on, Dirk. Jesus, Dirk, you jumped the Fuck gun, it. I'll man. I'll do another goddamn shot in a second. Oh, all right. Well, you got one second because. <laughs> Um, I'm all right, doing so, shots to my man BC, who like you know would totally laugh at the fact that we're having candidates on to like give their spiel. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we've done that before, haven't we? No, we actually haven't. Well, we I think we had them on, on with the with the goal of that, but we we never gave them a chance to talk. Like, so we did that tonight. Well, we don't give them a chance to talk. We never give them a chance to talk. Right. What's the point then? The That's a good fight question. For a chance to talk, which is what really? you're going to have to do when you actually join the CSM. <laughs> But you're not on the CSM. Oh, little do you know. Actually, the media you is running? on the CSM. No, I'm not fucking running. The media is on the CSM. We're on the you CSM. You heard it here first. Dirk for CSM. No. Yep. No, Dirk, no. CSM. No. Why not? Dirk because Hack was, was CSM was 2017. It would, have been, it, it would have been for CSM 10, which would have been like, you know, kind of like a historical moment of the 10 CSM and whatnot. All these other one, all these other CSMs are just your random, like, you know, like CSM. So, no. Maybe CSM 20. I may do CSM 20 oh, when shit. I'm like really fucking old. Um, all right. So, uh, show's coming up to an end. Uh, we're going to do a shot for the road. We're actually going to get out of here on time. So, uh, 
drunk Canadian can. I'm actually going for a smoke, man. Are you? Stretch out your goodbye. Are you? No, no, no. Can't can't we roll over into? Can't we quit now and then roll over into your show and just open it with <laughs> our talk? You, you can try to, but I'm actually going to be hopping onto a different comms from you guys. So, I mean, wow, yeah. you're a fucking dick. <laughs> Dude, what? So we can't show. shit all over his show like <laughs> we always do. It for so many times, I'm taking this one I time know. for me. No, no, I don't blame him. Like, I don't blame him. Part of it. When you're trying to do a stream of a game and you have like really? a, a cacophonous, I think that's a word. Cacophonous. <laughs> that guy's like a walking pink skin. Cacophony. Cacoc. Cacoc. Cacophony. Even I can. Oh, say okay. It there we go. Yeah. When you have that going on in the background when you're trying to commentate over whatever game you're playing it's pretty fucking annoying actually so i i, I give a drunk why does Canadian... that guy hang out here for two hours and then be like i'm totally going to another fucking comms after this <laughs> seriously it's like god damn what the fuck okay can we say goodbye yet like yeah okay wait, wait, shots for the road no, we can't we can't until he comes back well we okay yeah well we'll, we'll do we shots do shot, though we'll we do shots and then i was gonna do a nice and lengthy and heartfelt Goodbye and and thank you to everyone that came on the Just show. Just go around the around the clocks so and everybody can say their call outs and goodbyes. Are I want to thank Big do. Jefferson and uh, mm. you know freaking Aaron Thor, Commander A's, Roden and Suetonia for coming on tonight. There are not many freaking CSM candidates who will actually subject themselves to being human. So I totally give it to you guys for being able to come on a show like tonight, whether you were drinking or not drinking. This show is not the place where you want to, like, you know, I don't know what, portray your fucking humanity. So I give you credit for, like, showing that you are literally real people as opposed to those fucking robots who are also running for CSM that won't come on this show. Turn yeah. it over. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> All right, so let's get the shots. No, and I'm just drinking that fucking shot. Fuck it. Because well, that shot was right. for them, no matter what the fuck you guys else say. I was not... So just uh, saying, stop this, Paul huh? Sullivan comes back from taking his fucking shit. The election season actually just started today, didn't it? Today, the first day uh, of the campaign. Yesterday, I thought. Okay, yesterday. And uh, that means it's on for about a month, and then they vote March 4th? Yep. Yeah, dude. Like, I'm still working on my fucking passport, man. Now, where... <laughs> oh, shit, yeah, you got it. Now, now, one thing I can tell you... Um... It's not your passport, bro. It's your fucking visa to America. No, dude, like, 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 no <laughs> joke, like, like, no joke, though, because so I just barely became a citizen, like, a few years ago. So this is my first U.S. Where are you from? passport. I was born in the Philippines. Okay. Oh, I was going to guess you were from, like, Mexico, like me. Yeah, oh my god, did you like really Asia's read, Mexico, read into Mexico. that? Pretty, pretty close, right? Japanese, Mexico. You're so yeah, bad, it's, it's Asia's well, Mexico. Japan isn't in the, isn't the Philippines, at all. It's... Yeah, I mean, I'm super stoked to actually be working on a passport. Cause I, you know, I'm, I just want to go travel. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was, yeah, I, I was about to say it goes Asia. a lot faster, because I've had people tell me, like, oh, it can take, like, two to three months or four months, and then oh, I... Oh, man, I just pay the money. Yeah, I put in... Uh, well, I didn't even do the expedited thing. I just did, like, the basic thing, and I've never had a passport before, so I thought it'd take a while. And I applied for a passport, and literally like two to three weeks later, it was in the mail. So it goes yeah, pretty quick. Um, I don't know if it – Expedite it. Yeah, expedite. Right. I don't know if like if you just got U.S. It's citizenship, I don't know if that would uh, like cause well, yeah, it to slow down at all, but I don't think so. Yeah, because I called them today. So like, oh, they were asking, oh, we need your original uh, birth certificate. like – from the Philippines, you need Why yeah, you yeah, and it can't those? be a copy. It has to be like an act. Well, it could be a copy, but it has to be the direct like on, dude, actual dude, hospital dude, birth certificate. Dude, dude, you're in Idaho, America. Right. He's in the fucking Philippines. Okay, they look for something different than what you have. <laughs> yeah, well, How do you know? So I called them back. I was like, oh, can I just use my uh my shit that says I became a U.S. citizen? Oh like, yeah, yeah, that'll work too. That'll work too. I'm like, fuck's sake. Naturalization yeah. certificate. I noticed yeah, you, Dan. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Both my parents have those. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I actually got mine like while I was in, in fucking training. It was like, oh, uh, you better fucking show up to the stage because they're giving you your citizenship. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, how how so far is Paul Sullivan's fucking bathroom? Does he have to go out to the igloo he bathroom? Said he, he said he was going for a smoke. Jesus. Um, but then again, is he, is he smoking in an igloo? I, bathroom, I think like, I, I think LB can confirm this. I think all Canadian bathrooms are actually a log out back. Like a log it is seat. True. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. a log seat with when a pit confirm. with a pit when and some straw a, underneath it. When you it. buy a home in Canada, there is a tree out back designated for pissing on. 
And that's oh the God. only place. Who you does can not have it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's backyard, it's kind of like in Japan. Like you have to take your shoes off when you're even in your own house. Like it's it's, it's, just... it's zoned by the city. Like you, that's the one you piss on, and that's it. Yeah, you're not allowed to go anywhere else. Yeah. Yep. That's 100 percent true. Yep. They have exactly. one for the, one for the dog too. Don't piss on too. the other tree, but piss on that tree. Yep. I piss on the you same tree. You have to get a license for the time. dog, and then the dog gets one uh, zoned to him after that. He has to have his license first. Oh wow! So it's separate. That's but American equal? people, just like separate you guys but equal all trees? know. Yeah, Except dogs for and people in Canada are separate but equal. No trees. We're gonna be our own country soon. It won't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Collects it. Collects it is gonna happen. Your own country shit. <laughs> no more I'll... Colorado River water for you people. Although what I've heard though, yeah. not to get this into a political tangent, but what I've heard, like there is no like you as a state may try to do it, but there is nothing from what I've heard. I, I haven't gone and researched it, but there's nothing in the Constitution that allows a state to vote itself out of the union. Because the Except South tried to do that only... in the in the 1850s, no, and that no, didn't no. work, they, obviously. But they already had their vote to vote themselves in. We never had that vote. So technically, we haven't made that decision yet or something like that. There's some technicality. That's because we, literally back then, we, we bought knew We bought California from yeah. Spain. Because it bought <laughs> us, right. Yeah, we, we bought you, so we own you. <laughs> so you guys That's can't leave. That's not true. There are multiple states that actually have that built into their own constitutions and when they came in, but... But Wait, does oh the, God, does the, the right U.S. Union the recognize that, that as a viable thing they, that they can actually Cal enforce? California won't leave. We need to save you guys from yourselves. <laughs> that is true, Matterall. You know what? Can you please reach in and speak to all of us from our, from your heart and reach into our heart and not pull it out like a vampire? Uh, Are we still on? How oh, right, no, uh, okay. All right. Paul well, Sullivan. Paul Sullivan, we're waiting for you to get back. you to tell us what's going to happen next. What do you mean? Like for the next stream? Well, yeah. What are you? No, what are you gonna no, play? No, no, we mean literally. Like, are we going to war with Iran? No, yes. <laughs> well, for your I got, stream. What, what are you streaming? Nobody gives a shit what a Canadian thinks about Iran. <laughs> well, no, but like, what what are you what are you gonna stream next? What are you playing? Uh, normally I'd be doing curls, but I just got Conan, so I'm gonna be doing oh, some Conan. Oh shit, that looks fucking. I Fuck I saw yeah, the trailer. I want that fucking game. That that trailer looks fucking awesome. It's pretty fun. I'll be streaming. Does he that have next. long blonde hair that fades over to the right? I'm sure you can. No, but I have a giant donger hanging down between my legs. Oh, is oh, it like? Yeah. Is it like breast? Where you just like? Yeah. Oh shit! An actual stat for your. Is that Twitch? Is that Twitch allowed? Uh, people have been streaming it constantly, and it's like. All right. Yeah. Well, hey, nice. I... Oh, I have pants on. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. I got boxers. Sorry, man. Yeah. As long as the back of your fucking chair matches your lips, nobody cares what game you're playing. <laughs> Don't. All right. You know All right. So we're gonna close it out. It's been long. I'm gonna do one more shot for the road, and then we're gonna get the hell out of here. I I did that shot. Are we doing another shot? Yeah. Another well, shot. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Dirk's on his third one in the last road, like three minutes. Rain. Guys, Come on. please. You gotta take the cap off. There you go. Pop the copper. All right, Paul. Good luck with Conan. Uh, oh my god, that should be a fucking like mantra for this sh for this show. Pop the copper. All right, ready? Shots. All right, shots. All right, we're going to turn over to uh, Drunk Canadian. He's going to be playing some Conan uh, Exile, I think is what it's called. So wow, that was a really full yeah. shot. <laughs> thanks, everyone, for watching, and thanks uh, to all you guys for coming on uh, to play in our little games and stuff. <laughs> so thanks for coming on, guys. God bless all of the fucking open comms listeners of the world. God bless oh, you. By the way, like the uh, I'm too. gonna leave the team speak on so you guys can chat and people will like hear you and stuff. No, oh, all, all, of of sudden, no, no, no. all of a sudden we matter. All of a sudden open comms lives <laughs> Well, matter. let's not get carried away. I'm not gonna say you matter, but I'll leave it on. I just won't be talking to you guys. All right, I'm gonna kill the stream. We can uh, uh, apparently stay on here for for this thing. All right, peace out, bitches. Later, bitches. That's what. Later, bitches. Later, bitches. Later, bitches. Later, bitches. Later, bitches. Later, bitches.